The following program makes use of copywritten material as part of a psychological examination of music. All music copyrights remain property of their respected creators. The year is 2025. Big Tobacco had been rode hard and put away wet. Exhausted. It, it's been exhausted. There's been a new sheriff in town, and Lord willing, he don't take too kindly to them thar chew and cowboy killers. <sighs> no, not when the taste of nicotine can manifest over 300 delicious, hearty flavors. Mmm, cotton candy. No, Alpha Vapes has been around these parts and hangs his hat between Wingstop and the old Radio Shack. 3011 Texas 30, Sweet 104, Huntsville, Texas. They have over 300 in-house flavors and recently picked up on some premium e-juices. If you are ready to get your big boy britches on, swallow your nicotine like a real man, Alpha Vapes has everything you need and them folks will greet you kindly and show you the ropes. Alpha Vapes, Beta, ask somebody. All right, kin folk. Today's show is brought to you by the wildest bar in the wild, wild west, 12th Street Bar. School is back in session, kids. Okay, and you're gonna need a place to get that post-study session beer. And what other place to get one than 12th Street Bar? They have an incredible selection of drinks, including a Long Island, a Cosmos, or their signature Lily Twist. Okay, not to mention, August 26th, Wishbone Hayes and John Tullin Trio will be on their stage. You got Wishbone Hayes, which is the daddest dad band in the world, and you got John Tullin Trio, which is the funkiest funk band in the world. I swear, I love both these guys so much. Can't wait to check them out. Uh, now that school has started back up, you're going to want that hip spot to go to to get your mind off of studies and have a good time. Uh, everybody I know is going to be there, and everybody you know will be drawn to the atmosphere and the energy that this place brings. Okay, so if you want to drink, sing some karaoke, check out a band, have a few cold one with your buds, or you just want to sit on the new side room that they got and enjoy some table tennis, you're going to find something you'll love about this bar real quick. Get yourself over to 12 Street Bar now. I do not want to get your feathers ruffled, but I'd be dumber than a bag of hammers not to mention our final sponsor, Audible. Audible has millions of audio books. They just read you what you want to listen to, bless your heart. They have a western from Louis L'Amour called A Man Called Trent, which I believe might be the beginning of Nine Inch Nails. But hey, I haven't gotten to that one yet. You can get Audible for free for 30 days and a free book at audibletrial.com slash convo. You'd have to be a few cards short of a full deck to miss out. Again, that's audibletrial.com slash convo. Hey, why don't we just capture uh, lightning in a bottle? All right, you sexy bitches, welcome to today's show. Uh, in today's episode, we go into a brand new showcase special where we talk about the incredible, incredible Lincoln Park. Uh, was very, so incredible. We were so excited to go into this episode of uh, probably one of the best rock bands in the game. Uh, and we were hashtag blessed, hashtag it guys, hashtag blessed to be joined by our very good friend, the G-Man himself, Gary Romanski. Bit, we're probably one of the biggest Linkin Park fans right. of all time. Right, uh, but he was definitely the biggest in my in my little small clique of friends, and uh, that's why I thought it was best to get. Whenever you asked me, should we bring somebody on the show with us for this episode, without even thinking about it, without even you know, contemplating it, only word I said, Gary. Yeah, and uh, yeah. you asked him, and he was like, hell yeah. He did say it. He quite like that exactly like that so it was really an honor to have him back and since it was gary and uh gary knows his 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 music uh we went into a long marathon of an episode once again uh didn't think we were gonna do it you yeah. know what i mean because these uh these episodes just sort of happen as they happen but knowing that he was gonna be with us it's like okay we're probably gonna go three four five plus hours with this episode well, yeah. thankfully, only went three hours with this one, so yeah. it was really fun. You know, we got to talk about the history. We got to talk about our history with the band. 
Uh, we got to talk about uh, our favorite songs from the album. You know, all, all, sure, all, all yeah, the fun yeah. stuff that we do with these ones. But also what we got to do is we just got to we got to talk about we got to talk about the big thing that goes that's yeah. happened recently and we got to talk about the late great uh chester bennington uh it wasn't as hard as i thought it was gonna be because simply because it's been a little while you know we've had time to digest it yeah. happening um but still man just taking time just to talk about and honor his legacy uh as we did uh it, it felt really good to finally do that it was very therapeutic for me i could say this is definitely one of the showcase specials i think this is certainly one of our strongest episodes uh simply because we had it's all jam-packed with knowledge and feeling and everything's just like so tightly knit together not any not any bullshit time at all you know what i mean um it was all really tightly constructed and um also it's one of those things that like this band is so good but it wasn't even on my radar as far as a topic to discuss until, you know, the thing that happened with Chester. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, whenever that did happen, it, it certainly affected me quite a bit, a it lot sure more did. than I would have, I personally would have ever expected. Right. You know, and so being able to do this and go and, and hear back uh, with all of the music that they came out with um, was just remarkable being able to tell what kind of geniuses these guys were oh for sure like going back and listening to all their albums and realizes like holy shit like these yeah. guys had so many amazing songs like i mean we had a certain amount of time where we were able to work on this episode but still it's like i just want to listen to everything over and over again yeah it was just such good stuff and uh not to mention it's like it's appealing to every group every crowd yeah it, it, it's insane how much uh was put in into it and to uh to appeal to everybody, you know, including themselves. Um, also, uh, at the end of this, uh, you know, there's there's a little bit of a treat, yep. you know, um, and and you'll hear towards the uh, the end of the episode what what it is. But uh, you definitely want to listen to this and um, and uh, definitely check out what well, the special thing that we left at the end. Absolutely. Uh, we didn't get to say much of it at, during the episode, but just go ahead and say it. Uh, uh, rest in peace, Chester Bennington. Uh, you are the best, and we hope that this episode honors your legacy as well as honor the band that you helped shape and uh, the music that you left for us. So on that cool note, take us there, buddy. All right. Welcome to The Conversationalist. makes me think that if they ever uh, had like a, a wall like with pictures I would be on that you'd be bitch. on there like twice oh man yeah. <laughs> I'd be all over it I always wanted to do one of those things because I'm, I'm a sucker for free t-shirts I want to go to one of those eating competitions just because I know I could fucking kill it yeah I, it's, it's because you're Asian be <laughs> Hell because <yeah>. you're Asian <laughs> I was about to say something you gotta, you gotta channel your inner what, what was his name Kobe the hot dog guy Kobe something Kobe Bryant yeah bring this up a little bit yeah Channel him and uh, <laughs> not Kobe Bryant. You can Kobe do anything. Bryant. The Black Mamba. <laughs> the Black Mamba. Anyways, uh, man, uh, real quick, got to make a quick introduction to our guest today. Uh, he is uh, G Man, the the Shag Man, right. uh, captain of the Shagtastic Voyage. Um, I'm just trying to keep it going at this point. Um, <laughs> I got nothing else. No, Gary Romanski, I want to thank you so much for joining us once again. No problem. Uh, we enjoyed having you last time for that three-hour marathon of us. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about that. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah. It was such a great podcast and ended up not being a show that existed yeah. for us. Yeah. I don't think we ever even touched that. Did we? No, I don't think we talked yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, you know, y'all, y'all, we did this huge episode, an epic episode. Open air. Open air festival, preparing for it. 
and then it, it was a dud. Yep. Yeah, the uh the the uh the episode was solid and uh we did not get to see the show we thought yeah. we were going to go. The see. only thing that sucked was not knowing that Avenged Sevenfold was going to do a free show as long as you had your ticket at another place. Yeah. Oh. I was yeah. all the way back to Huntsville and yeah. then I saw it on Facebook. I, I think like, a lot Whoa. of the bands did that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's just, why, it, why, it, why it helps to follow your favorite bands on social media is like on Instagrams and Twitters because, you know, you hear everything that they don't share on their other right. stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, anyways, no, thank you so much for joining us again. Uh, we're going to be talking about a band that we have a very strong connection with, one that's one of our favorite bands of all time. Uh, talking about Lincoln Park, yes. and I uh, was very excited whenever we when we decided that we wanted to do this. Obviously, we'll save all the hefty stuff for the very end. But sure. until we get to that point, we're going to talk about probably one of the best alternative rock new metal bands, I guess you could say. Yeah, new metal is uh, I think is a suiting uh, genre type. I mean, I don't like. I think I, I don't like. I've a, been thinking I don't like of it as bands. I consider it rap rock done right. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> honestly, Lincoln Park has no genre. Yeah, that's, that's they're the they're past it. They're I mean, yeah. they're, when sure. they came out, yeah, new metal all day. Yeah, sure. Yeah, or, or rap rock, new metal, whatever. Yeah. Now or even after that, no. Yeah. They're they're their own popular without being pop. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. I mean, they're pop, just you not know. in the genre of music. Yeah, they they're just one of the largest bands ever. Yeah. How is that Period. not pop? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. But uh, I guess. Usually, how we start these is as uh, I'm generally curious how uh, you discovered Lincoln Park. Like, what was like the first time? Okay, just by you laughing, I'm gonna imagine it involves you getting your dick sucked. It's so dumb. Oh my god! So <laughs> Isn't that every band for you? <laughs> no, just I think just this one. I think no. I was. Uh, I remember it was. Was it between? when you discovered Barney? It was either. <laughs> I think. I think it was between my I think it was between my sophomore and junior year. I'm pretty sure. And er, that summer I went to go visit my cousin. And right. we every summer I'd go and we'd hang out and whatever we'd do whatever. And I remember we went to bed and then all of a sudden <laughs> I hear this music come on and I'm like this shit sounds good, but my sheet starts going up and down. So I'm like, wait a minute. I look down and there's And it was your eyes. cousin, your cousin. <laughs> no. Some girl I don't even know, she's just down there. I'm like, okay. She's like balls deep. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's fine. You can do that. But what is this? What is this I'm hearing? And I just, I remember it was paper cut. Mm-hmm. It was, a, it, they just started, they walked in apparently while we were sleeping, right. turned it on on his computer had it blaring. I, it's, apparently, that's what they do. So my aunt didn't hear, and then they went under the sheet sound. Mm-hmm. So that was the first time I heard him. And when I remember when I heard it, I was like, okay, I apparently really like music because this chick's doing this, but I can't stop listening to that. Track. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, that was the first time that I was exposed to Lincoln Park, and right. I, yeah. I've been a fan ever since. That's a, that's a good story into uh, discovering a band. I like, guess. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Paper cut, by the way, that. Yeah, just off the off the cuff with that song, like that's like a really great way to like introduce this band because that was the first sure. song on first their first song, album. First album, yeah. And yeah. I think if you take it from a live perspective, like starting a set off with that, you know, that little little drum beat that they do, the samples. <laughs> yeah, uh, fucking phenomenal way to start off an album. But yeah, Paper Cut was uh, they had a music video for that one. I believe. Yes, they did. Yeah, that was a great yeah. one. No, actually, that that music video was really interesting to me because I feel like that it was, was very nineties. Well, looking music the, the video. thing about Lincoln Park music videos is they're all like super produced and they're all well, well done. Yeah, like they're all amazing. But this one had like a part that bothered me. What was that? Like, it it shifts into a scene of like, you know, there's there's all the guys in the room, you know, and they've got their uh, musical equipment and stuff like that, and then like it like the camera goes into like the wall of a room that has like like a dirty sink or something like that. It's just like really nasty. Like mm-hmm. it, it's like the, the boiler room kind of situation. Yeah. Um, but whenever it goes into that beginning that na 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 na, there's nothing visually changing with it. Like, it's just like, there's nothing any different from scene to scene. Right. Like I can only hope that maybe the version of what I saw was like off time. I, I don't because know, man. <laughs> it was it was faulty. Like I was like, oh, why why did they, why did they do that? Right. Yeah. Speaking of like awesome videos, 
Right. Did you know that they were rated the sixth greatest band of the music video era? Really? And that makes sense. Third best of the new millennium. Makes Wrong. perfect sense. Uh, like you're saying, all the production that they put into their videos. They had one, which we'll get to that later on, that was like a fucking anime. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Breaking yeah. the Habit, yeah, I think it was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It looked like fucking, uh, what was that one anime? Akira or something like that? It had like the Akira. same yeah, yeah. yeah, it was it had old the, school style. had the same style. Uh, and then. Uh, I think Faint, which was one the Matrix soundtrack, they had well, the one with all the lights yeah. and they had the yeah. huge crowd, like looked phenomenal. You know, every yeah. all of their videos always just look really amazing. Um, what is, I've done was like uh, a, almost like a political mm-hmm. one. The what I've done, have you seen that one? I uh, don't. Do it's that. like it goes into like it has them playing and everything, but it, like it goes, it, it it's so reminiscent of U two in so many ways. Oh, you're talking about the one in the desert. <laughs> yeah, the one in the and desert. The reason it's so U two is Chester looks like he's Bono. trying to pull off Bono. <laughs> yeah, he, he does. Even, he, he does, does but, like the lean with the the, right. the, the the foot tilted back to the side. And, yeah, like, but it's not just Bono that. Did. It's also the fact like that. I there's parallels between them and you two because of the charity aspect of Lincoln Park. Oh my god! Oh, yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. And for them to be so political and on that edge, it mm-hmm. is re- like that. Watching that video made me realize the parallel. Yeah. And like the video itself is like uh, pictures and videos of like starving people, and then going back to American culture and how they represent women. You know, like yeah, it, it's just it's super interesting like mm-hmm. seeing that parallel just by watching the music video right yeah. and not to mention johan does all the videos yeah because he did not know that yes. that's yeah. one and thing did I didn't you know uh that's actually how he got in the band uh mike mm-hmm. went to art school right yes and then that's where they met and johan was was a dj but he was going to school for visual art okay. and things like that and then they brought him in as a dj but he could do videos right so then bam you got your own guy making music videos, sure. and he can throw, you know, all scratch right. some records. Mike Shinoda <laughs> doing the artwork. Yeah, yeah. Well, they all do a little bit of the artwork. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah I've yeah. seen, the, I've seen on the video yeah. of Meteor. Uh, Why don't we go in a little bit of an order? Yeah, 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 I think we're all yeah, all yeah, over we're, the place we're, right we're, now. We're, we're dropping names. Yeah, a little too easy. Like we know these guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, the uh, listeners like, okay, I don't know what the yeah. fuck. <laughs> um, What's happening? First off, okay, you got. You got your boy Mike Shinoda, who is kind of—I don't know if you want to call him the brains of the operation, but he puts. He, I feel like he is. Yeah, he's the brains of the producing and things like that. He also takes care of a lot of the other stuff, but they all pitch in right, in right, different right. ways. Yeah, right. um, then you—they'll got, carry their own weight for sure. Yeah, yeah. Then you got Johan uh, on the on the keys and samples and DJ. Yeah, turntables, uh, turntables. Uh, I forget the, his real name, but I just want to say it was a ballsy ass move to change your name to Phoenix. The, oh, the Dave? bass player. Yeah, and that's a Dave. bass player. Yeah, yeah. Name. Dave Farrell. Fer- yeah. yeah, before the Phoenix that we know in real life. Yeah, uh, that was the only person who I knew changed their name to Phoenix. And yeah. I was like, ballsy move on your part, dude. You, like, you know, uh, he left the band originally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. yeah. 90, 90, uh, 6, eight. 97. He, yeah. Well, the band started in ninety six. Right. Why don't we start there? Why don't we start at the very beginning? <laughs> okay. Well, we still got um, some more members to, if you want. Yeah, to, yeah. You know, we're gonna go. We're okay, gonna we'll start at the very beginning, okay. Okay. where there's okay. three guys met in school. Yeah. You know, in high school, um, that would be. Um, uh, it was founded by Mike, Mike Brad, Shinoda, and Rob. Brad, Brad, <laughs> Brad Delson, and Rob. Borden. Yeah. Okay, and uh, so basically what those guys are is uh, Brad Delson's lead guitar and has been the whole time. Yeah. Um, and uh, Rob Borden, um, he's the drums. He's the, uh, I see him as a baby face. Him? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can I see, see him it. as a baby's fa- he, baby he face. He hasn't for really sure. changed. It looks it. Not really. his, I mean, hair, his hair is either short or long. Yeah, that's, that's what it. I was about to say. The only thing that's changed about him is his I hair length. I don't think he's gained a pound. Yeah. Like he's the same as what he was in the beginning. Right. Yeah, and and he's been in the band the whole time. Yep. Um, I think out of, course, I think out of anybody in the band, if if anyone was to have a problem with like swearing or something like that, I feel like he would because he always just seems like so soft. That's graphic. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's graphic. Guys. <laughs> graphic language. Let's tone it down. Too much. Yeah. <laughs> that's that baby face. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I got. You. I understand what you mean. Now. <laughs> um, and then of course Mike Shinoda, which is the the what's more relevant. Uh, the rapper 
yeah. so to speak. Mm-hmm. But he does the vocals, rhythm, guitar, keys, synth, mm-hmm. and of Produces. course, Produces. yeah, ab- yeah. He does most of the producing, doesn't he? Like it depends on uh, 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 what albums they are. But right, there are right. albums where they finally let them go and produce the whole thing. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, along with other really great producers, yeah. well, some of them. But some of them, they actually did by themselves. Yeah, yeah. Uh, real quick, uh, I, it wasn't until recently that I really started to appreciate uh, Mike Shinoda's actual like keyboard playing, yeah. which yeah. has always been great. But I think when in the later albums and like the, like the synth sounds and the keyboards and piano stuff like that, it's like really really well, fine he's stuff. Classically trained, is he? Oh. When he was a child, mm-hmm. his parents made him take uh, piano, classical mm-hmm. piano, and then he took that and he started diving into jazz and other things. And then he took that same style mm-hmm. and he started rapping over it. Oh, nice! Right, so he right. started doing this when he was a kid. <laughs> yeah, he's a he's a prodigy. <laughs> he is. Basically. That's what I, I think. I mean, out of all, out of all of this research, it seems mm-hmm. as though like Mike Shinoda is definitely like he can touch base like in anything related to arts and entertainment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he he's released his own art projects and everything. Yeah, yeah. so it's it's amazing. Yeah, um, my but, thing is like, when did he have time to paint? Right, <laughs> <laughs> between touring and recording albums and marketing and doing all that stuff, when yeah. did you stop? Him? Well, I, I think he would have found a way, man. Because I think, and we'll, we'll get to this the album later, but like I think during the making of Meteora, yeah. when they were, like while they were on tour for Hybrid Theory, like they were recording Meteora in like the back of their bus, and like this tiny ass little spot in the back of their bus, like they were coming up with this, all the ideas. So I, I'm sure he would have found a way. Yeah, there's always yeah. a way. <clears throat> but anyways. Sure. So the three of those dudes, Mike, Rob, and Brad, um, they attended Agora High School. And uh, Agora Hills is a uh, suburb of Los Angeles. Right. So these guys are from L.A. Um, So whenever they took music a little bit more seriously, they started recruiting people like uh, Joe Hahn, Dave Phoenix Farrell, and Mark Wakefield uh, to perform in their band Zero with an X. Yes. Very edgy. Very edgy. <laughs> it seems like all the bands that are mentioned in this story have an X in their name. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. But um, so yeah. Now we'll talk about these guys. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, Dave Farrell plays bass. Um, and yeah, he left the band in '98. Yep. Um, to uh, he was in like some like other band. Christian it was ska Christian band. ska punk band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And had like a uh, silly name. Were, uh, I can't remember. I actually had the name. Oh, uh, Tasty Snacks. Tasty, Tasty Snacks. snacks. With, yeah. an, with, with an X. With an X. X. <laughs> <laughs> it must have been the thing at the right. time. Oh, it was like, you know, a generation Static X. X. Yeah. Generation X. Yeah. I guess that's what they were trying to market. Yeah. Maybe. Like, that's, that's I just, I the just executioners. Imagine, yeah. I can just imagine them like writing out their names like, yeah, that's the name. And then somebody just takes an eraser and just erases the <laughs> the one letter. It's like the X. Now it's perfect. That's what it needed. <laughs> My name is Bob with an X. Yeah. <laughs> I look at it and think of Xerox for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> no, zero. <laughs> Xerox, zero. Xerox, yeah. zero, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. We got um, Joe Hahn, turntables, samples, programming, backup vocals, 96 and on. Mm. Yeah. So, you know, still for, um, you know, obviously, I don't think we really know what the plans are set yeah. up right now for the yeah. future. Um. Mike just released a video of him and somebody working on music together. Somebody was on the drums. He was uh, working on some music. So right. maybe mm-hmm. they are trying to get back into it. That'd be good. And yeah. as far as I know, they only canceled their American part of the tour. Right. So they might be trying to figure out a way to keep it going. It's just really hard to... You can't replace that. It, <laughs> it, it's hard to even envision as a fan mm-hmm. what it's going to be like. But we're talking about some fucking pretty genius dudes oh, I know. really oh, yeah. smart yeah. guys who are obviously going to do something yep you know if not independently yeah, yeah sure. especially mike Shinoda, oh yeah Christ. i met he was he was already diving into other projects while even you know he was still in lincoln park you know yeah. so yeah but we'll get to that later uh yeah. so we got johan um uh who else is it mark wakefield was the singer mm-hmm. yeah um, that guy's got to be shooting himself in the foot. Yeah. Like, he, he left in 98 to idiot. pursue Other, music that's doing something. Yeah. Right, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, yeah I think they, they put all that effort into an album, and then they sat there and they pushed it to all these different yeah. record labels and got nothing, right. which caused tension in the band. 
Right. So then he's like, screw this. It's not doing anything. Well, I've, go, I've listened to the recordings, and yeah. it, it wouldn't be Linkin Park if it wasn't. A, if it wasn't for Chester, yeah. and B, if it was this guy. You know, not yeah. like he was terrible, but I listened it's to the recordings. It's not Chester. It's not Chester. Yeah. Um, so, uh, who else was added? Um, what, af- after that? Yeah, well, no, in that period, in that moment of time. Uh, so, Mark Wakefield, nobody, Joe Hahn, and Phoenix. Okay. Yeah, nobody was added yet. Okay. Um, they started recording and producing songs in Shinoda's makeshift bedroom studio in 96. They had a four-track demo named Zero, mm-hmm. which I listened to. Yeah. And uh, they had, uh, I, I think it was it was maybe Points of Authority or something like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was one of those songs uh, that were obviously from on the hybrid theory. Yeah. Sounded way different. Oh, yeah. Um, it, like, the lyrics were, like, only part of the lyrics, half of the lyrics. Yeah. Um, but it was good. Obviously, uh, it wasn't what we hear and re- respect and love today. But yeah. you know, it is what it is. Um, so through frustration of not landing a record deal, Mark Wakefield left for new, probably better projects. Mm. Obviously, I'm sure he's doing really well nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, uh, Farrell <laughs> left a tour with the Christian punk ska band Tasty Snacks with a fucking X. Um, Zero recruited Chester Bennington in '99. And uh, Chester was previously in a post-grunge band uh, called Gray Days. Yeah. If you guys listen to that. I have not. Uh, uh, was Gray Days with a Z by any chance? Yeah, <laughs> it, was. Yes, it was. I didn't it even was. know that. I just guessed it. It should have been with an X. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I listened to live footage. Yeah. Um, as well as one of their recorded uh, songs. And uh, it was so reminiscent of Tool. Like was Chester it? was very doing, like he was doing a Tool thing. Really, it was like almost Tool and Soul Asylum, which is kind of a weird mix. That is a very yeah. weird. Or mix. Silver Chair. It was kind of a Still, Silver Chair feel. That's yeah, weird. Yeah. But it was grunge. It was it was it was it was post grunge, is what what Wikipedia called it. But mm-hmm. like, it was weird how like it. You could tell this guy was trying to be mannered. Chester. Yeah. And he had long dreads. I would, I would he like. Looked, to hear Chester pull some Maynard. That would be great. Oh, I mean, I it was think could it do wasn't it. bad. It was fun. Like yeah. it was interesting to listen to. And he looked like the singer from Counting Crows. He had like the long, <laughs> long dreads, you know, yeah. and he was just kind of walking all sloppily, you know, like yeah. on the stage. But it was a thing. He was wearing overalls. What? <laughs> it was the nineties, man. Yeah. No. I mean it made sense. Yeah. Man. I I'm, I've I saw a picture of Chester when he was real young, and I remember he had long hair, but I can't yeah. imagine him with like dreadlocks. It was. I mean, it could have been just long hair, but I mean, I'm I'm looking in it this didn't video like, on YouTube. It didn't has, look like that great of like quality, of, like video quality. So it was terrible quality. Yeah. Um, but um, it was great. Yeah. You you definitely have to check it out. Um, so with Chester, the whole dynamic had changed. Of uh. Zero. They ended up uh, changing their band name to Hybrid Theory. Yep. And uh, it says on Wikipedia that Shinoda and Bennington's chemistry had revived uh, the the band, mm-hmm. like in in what it was, which which is very obvious. I actually used to have a um a, one of those demo CDs. You guys ever get one of those demo yeah. CDs? Had a lot of different bands. I had um, Runaway from Hybrid Theory. Yes. And. I- I wish I still had that disc. <laughs> I'm about to look. I might have one of those. You should check. I did. It was it was interesting because yeah. I remember having it and being like, "Wait, that's Lincoln Park off yeah. the album Hybrid yeah. Theory." Mm-hmm. Um, but now I gotta find my went, CDs. <laughs> went by Hybrid Theory in that day. Um, I got a question. It's a good fucking name. I got a question. I want to ask you guys. So you're just saying how Chester and Mike Shinoda is kind of like their chemistry, sort of like yeah, revitalized their band or whatever. Right. You, you think because. Not that I know a whole lot about Chester, but from what I've gathered, sure, his personality and sort of and Mike Shinoda's personality, sort of like, kind of opposites. I, I probably could safe to say. What do you, what do you think? Kind of yes and no, but like different for sure. Different people. Well, yeah, you, of course. Yeah. You think taking two different kind of components and then adding them together, sort right. of like worked. Like I mean, you could well, take it, like it worked because that's what they were already aiming for. Right. You know, right. you got this one that it, at the time he was all about, you know, putting his rap down. Mm-hmm. Right. And then they brought in this guy and he's all about putting his vocals down. Right. A- Clean screams. That was that's what they wanted to do anyway. Yeah. So even if they were two different people coming mm-hmm. in, 
that they, probably helped. Shinoda knew who he was looking for. Mm. Well, yeah. And and he knew how that would work because he's listened to his stuff and he liked that particular dynamic that Chester had in his vocals. Yeah. Right? So he knew ahead of time. But one thing that we should definitely mention um, that I didn't realize till later in the research is apparently, and you guys probably already know this, uh, the the band's chemistry as human beings is far from amazing. Like it was, it was not far from amazing. It was, it was wonderful how less, how like not drama there was. Like yeah. they, they were just they worked together so well. Yeah. Uh, Shinoda considered it like everybody in the band was just his best friends in the world. Yes. Like brothers. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't really yeah, get sure. that. That's absolutely yeah. the only way it can be. Yeah. But, but you know, when you when you have that in mind, and especially with what all these dudes seem like really cool, laid back, fucking good people. Yeah. I don't mean laid back as in lazy, obviously, because these guys are fucking yeah. work, work horses, you yeah. know, um, but like they very peaceful. Yeah. You know, and uh, I mean, it's just amazing how the dynamic between Shinoda and Chester, which, you know, watching that Meteora video. Uh, the making of Meteora. Yeah. Um, they were talking about like, you know, whenever they start writing, they don't talk to the other guys about it. Like they go into a room together and then they, you know, put that shit up and they have a, a, a certain sort of like relationship that's a little deeper, mm-hmm. you know, um, on that, on that writing aspect. And then they just kind of, whenever they're ready, they, they share that with everybody else. Yeah. Oh, well, they did that a few times, but not every time. Okay. There was one album where it was just uh, mainly him and Brad wrote the whole album. Oh wow! They're they're actually Mike? the producer. Yeah, Mike and Brad were okay. the only two that did it, and then Chester came in. So th- they changed it up, which I think is what kept him fresh. For sure. So in '99, they released a self-titled extended play, which circulated around online chat rooms due to their street team. Yes. Which. What was one thing that they totally fucking had going on for them throughout their entire career? It, it was a street. That's that's the weird thing. It wasn't a street team. It was an online street team. Right. This no. What the reason I point that out? So like yeah yeah exactly. Well, this was that time when online shit was starting to matter. Well, no no no. That's the thing. It hadn't started to matter yet. Yeah. It people yeah. were kind of looking at it and you know oh what is this? Let me put my toe in it and see what right. Is. That's all it was. But right. one thing about Lincoln Park is they always. We're one step ahead of everything. Yeah. Getting into, you know, doing online chats and, sure. and sending a street team in there. Nobody yeah. had done that. Getting into MySpace before anybody else did. Getting into Facebook before anybody else did. Getting into yeah. all. That's what they did. They were always one step ahead. The, From the just, beginning. Just talking about this shit and the research I've been doing. Like, I've been doing nothing, honestly. I'm talking about me personally. Yeah. I've been doing nothing, honestly. But just like. Oh my God! These guys. <laughs> yes. Yes. It's, yes. They're, they're that band where every time you look at something or you learn something about them, you're like, "Why didn't I do that? Right? Why? Why am I not doing that? Why right? Yes. These guys. Here's super intelligent. Here's super... my advice to anybody that is listening to this that I was a musician: look up, research Lincoln Park, look what they did, yeah, and do the same thing. Except I for like, swear. except for like one thing. What? It's pretty obvious. Just one thing. Don't do. That Chester may have done, but uh, that's kind of cool. that's kind of. Yeah. But that's emotions. That's not thought. Yeah, that's, driven. that's yeah. not at all what I'm yeah, talking yeah. about. Everything yeah. else, if, fucking uh, spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, uh, so um, they eventually changed their name to Lincoln Park for a few different reasons, and I think you may have told me one of the reasons why before they changed their name to Lincoln Park. Mm, Maybe I'm, okay. I'm, I'll tell you what I know. I'll tell you what I know. Uh, one of the reasons is because um, there was already another band called Hybrid. Yeah. And uh, they didn't want, want to deal with that drama or that yeah. bullshit. Well, even then, that would be hard to market. And anybody who looks up Hybrid, they might see Hybrid Theory. Right, or who looks right. up Hybrid Theory. Actually, if you look up Hybrid Theory and there's somebody else called Hybrid, the first thing that's going to pop up is Hybrid. Sure. So you're just screwing yourself. You're, right. you're sponsoring somebody else, basically. Absolutely. You I type in Hybrid Theory now. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> it's a little different. You get partly through hybrid, and it's already there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I kind of wish they went the uh, the route that Better Than Ezra. Remember that band? Yeah. Uh, there was a band called Ezra already out there. It's like Better <laughs> Than Ezra. So they called him Better Than Ezra. Yeah. I, was like, uh, I like it. It works. <laughs> I like it. That works. That's a, was that Counting Blue Cars? No, that's Dishwallow, right? I don't know. Mm. Doesn't Anyways, matter. Yeah. Um, 
so and then also um they wanted to name it lincoln park um i'm not exactly sure why they chose lincoln park i think you might know uh it wasn't just after a regular park that was it near was them? after a park um and they were actually trying to call it lincoln like L- right like with that, yeah Abraham yeah lincoln yeah. yeah and they didn't do that because of the url exactly they wanted their own url so it was and in the end that was the smartest thing they ever did because it led you just, just a whole other in the end <laughs> you just said in the end. I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah, yeah no, I, I think it, I mean, if you take all of those band ideas, I mean, hybrid, hybrid sounds like an okay name, but. Yeah. yeah. Hybrid yeah. theory is actually a really fucking cool idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But looking at now, you got Lincoln Park hybrid theory and looking at it like that, I can't, I can't picture that as right. a band name. Well, Even back then I probably couldn't. There's no that. other band name like Lincoln Park. Yeah. And I think that in order to create your own thing out of something. Yeah. It's good to have it thrown from a whole different fucking field of thought. Yeah. You know, so for them to be able to put a fucking name of a park. Yeah. You know, like now, anytime you think of that, anytime you think of the word park, it's co- correlated. You know yeah. what I mean? And uh, I think I think it was smart. It just at that time before that happened. Yeah, it probably wouldn't seem like it. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. So um, definitely one foot ahead of the game like you've been talking about. <laughs> they about. always are. Um, um, before you go further, no. do you know how they got signed? Because uh, it is about not in Wiki- it's not in Wiki- Wiki- Wikipedia or it's not in anything. Ah. Why don't you let me know? Drop some knowledge on this, Gary. <laughs> Drop some, that's what this is All for, right, man. So everybody, there's this whole, there's always been rumors about with Lincoln Park, but Mike actually cleared it up. The way Lincoln Park got signed is they knew that the A&R rep was going to come to one of their shows. Right. So what they did is they all came from different schools. Right. Like majority of them. Yeah. So they actually were throwing a party that night. And in order to get in the party for free, you had to go to the concert and get a ticket and then go to the party in order to get in. Mm-hmm. So they did this to all the schools and everybody came to the concert <laughs> That the A and R rep was at, and he's like, "Oh my God, there's so many people looking at this band." Right. He called him up, got him signed, and then apparently later the guy was like, "I hate you guys. <laughs> I hate you guys because y'all tricked me." <laughs> but <laughs> that's amazing. Yeah. So th- it wasn't anything else. That is literally how they got the A and R guy to get him a contract right. and get him signed. Was they they tricked him into thinking they had a bigger fan base. Than well, see, I did. know that they they were like friends or having some sort of communication with a dude that was a part of Warner Brothers. Uh, it's uh, Jim Blue. Jeff, yes. Jeff Blue. Jeff Blue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He was in Zomba Records, vice president first. Okay. But that's not how that happened. That's not how that happened. No. Okay. Like that, that helped them get Warner Brothers. But the A&R rep is the one that called in and was like, hey, I think, I think he actually sent because he wanted to see what Chester was like with the band. Right. Because he's the one that suggested Chester. Yeah. So when they sent the A&R rep, they're like, okay, well, let's make sure we have thousands of people there. And they got all these different schools, all these people coming in, and bam, we're huge. No, we're not, but you think we are. <laughs> so, and it worked. So that's how they that's got That's awesome. Yeah. That's, One fucking foot. Yeah. Ahead of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Every time. They're geniuses. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, that that's that's pretty awesome. Yeah, so that I've always been like, okay, so anytime we need, we know an AR, an AR rep's coming. Okay, all right. We got a so. promise. <laughs> we got a we got a promise. Uh, cake and punch. Cake and punch. Yeah. Come to our show. You'll get free cake and punch, and everybody will be there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um. So I guess we're on to our first studio album. Okay. Yes. Uh, the one we know and love. Uh, had so many fucking hits on it. Yep. And. Uh, it blew the fucking world up, man. It just one fucking go, dude. As mm-hmm. soon as it came out, I mean, that's obviously where I first heard them. Yeah. You know, you were telling us your story. What's yeah. your story? Uh, well, with hybrid theory, well, with uh, at the time period that this that this came out, it was a huge moment for me where like I was discovering a lot of music through my brother at the time. Right. And I think that's usually the best way to discover music is through somebody else them sharing it with you. Sure. And uh, I want to say like he saw a music video and he was like, oh, I love this band. I want to get the record. And then he got the record and then we would listen to it, listen to it together and the big CD player. And uh, I remember just thinking like, wow, this is like really fun, really, you know, good music. And then I saw the video for uh, their, their first single that they had. Uh, yeah. Fucking. Hypocrite? 
No, not paper no, no. cut. The other one. The I'm no. about to break. One, one step closer. One step closer. Yeah. Right. And uh, I saw that music video, so I saw them for the oh, first yeah. time, and they were doing that thing where like they're like right in front of the camera, like holding the microphone, like yeah, just like yeah. in the camera's face. Yeah. And, I, and part of me was like bunch of spiky haired white dudes like <laughs> trying to act hard like yeah i don't know if i'm feeling this now that i see what they're like right. yeah um but i definitely just enjoyed the music i thought it was really fun yeah. uh, and then listening to the rest of the album and discovering new songs on there that i really liked uh it was actually really fun i actually have like a funny story about uh my whole uh like beginning s- stages with lincoln park okay is that um me and my brother, like, we really, really liked this band together. Like, there was only, like, a few set of bands that we listened to together at the time. There was Linkin Park. Uh, I want to say we were getting into Mudvayne because Dig just came out sure. around that time. Your uh, brother introduced me to Mudvayne. Really? Yes. Hey, all right on. Uh, then, Flaw. Like, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but at, at this time period, it was, like, huge days for new metal. So you had Linkin sure. Park, uh, Limp Bizkit, obviously. Yeah. Um, I was pretty, you know, I enjoyed a lot of, like, Rage Against the Machine. You know, like, I was, like, into, like, a lot of bands. And um, so we heard Linkin Park. And since me and my brother, we have kind of like this fascination, I guess, with like characters, like creating characters yeah. and creating like cartoon characters and stuff like okay. that. Uh, we kind of we created like an imaginary band out of characters that we were creating, and we decided that we wanted to make them off of like animals. You know, we wanted to be like and like an animal band, right? And we were like, okay, who who's gonna be what? You know. And we, we, there was like a duck that was based off of West Borland, <laughs> <laughs> a koala bear based off of Tom Morello. Nice. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, I think a bass player off of Ryan from Mudvayne. Okay. I mean, a, the, a, hippo a hippo was the bass player. So a hippo Ryan from oh, okay. Mudvayne. Um, I don't remember who the drummer was supposed to be off, but he was a monkey. Um, and then the, the lead singer was a squirrel. Who is based off of Chester Bennington? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, being a kid and just creating this picture in your mind, like, that's all you could think of is just like this, like, twitchy squirrel with spiked yeah. hair, and he's all like being weird, like Chester Fucking Bennington was. Flames on his arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> totally, totally. So, like, that was kind of like always the connection I had with that. Is like, he, I was so impacted by this dude that I wanted to create like a a, a fictional character yeah. based off of him. Um, so. Diving more and more into the music, mean, most of my exposure to this band was always like the music videos that they had, like One Step Closer, yeah, and then Crawling. Crawling was probably the biggest one, yeah. Um, yeah. I remember like back in those days, we would have like the VHS tape that was solely for like music videos that we just loved, you know, that we always because back in those days, you know, we couldn't always afford CDs, so it was either record the music video or have a cassette tape in the radio and whenever they played on the radio hit record you know like yeah so we're very limited to what we what we had as far as music so we'd always record music videos and crawling was always like the one that i would want to watch yeah because it was always it was even back then as a little kid it was like such a deep video because you have the girl who looks like she's in like an abusive relationship and yep. like just crying and all that stuff in front of the mirror um and then just seeing the band rock out you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like the, I don't even know what you would have described the, you know, where they were rocking out and there's like some fucking graphics going. I don't remember exactly, but uh, it was just all really amazing to me. Yeah. So much that I just, it, it left a huge impression on me. So that's yeah. how it was for me. I'd have to say like the first time I've heard almost definitely one step closer. Yeah. And um, actually take that back. One of the first times that I heard them was other than that music video was I think paper cut or one of their other songs was on a soundtrack to a, a video game. It was like a skateboarding video game. Not like Tony mm. Hawk or anything like that, but it was whenever the PlayStation 2 was first coming out. Yeah. It was like some like shitty skateboarding game, like B-level you know stuff. And that was one of the songs that came on there. So definitely, you know, just like through different medias was how I, I discovered that band. Yeah. Yeah, One Step Closer was the first one, and I would say like it was at the same time as like Flaw. I didn't, I didn't really think anything super special about them, mm-hmm. but at the same time, like their songs would stick in your head yeah. and they were yeah. very clear on what they were and they were different, but like on an aesthetic level at that time, it seemed the same to me as like flaw. Like, um, it really? just, yeah. Yeah. I think it was a spiky hair thing. Yeah. Spiky I, I, hair tattoos. Yeah. Yeah. Even though flaw looked a little bit more rougher than, right. uh, did, Lincoln Park. Did flaw have rap in it? Kind of, not really. Just a little bit. Maybe not. like one or two songs, and it, was, it wasn't it was like rap rap. It was just like yeah. faster singing. Yeah. yeah. Link, Linkin Park always had like, not I don't want to say always, but like it did have like that very evident rap. 
Yes. You know, and Mike Shinoda fucking spit it like clear, like it sounded right. Yeah. He knew the dynamic for it, uh, especially, you know, at that hybrid theory state. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. This this album is definitely uh, probably ultimately my favorite, if not only because of it was the only album that like I followed or I enjoyed at the time of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like listening to more, um, I really enjoyed the album in entirety. Like crawling, I was was one of those I was just I would always make fun of. Yeah. Because really? yeah, because of the Chester Bennington, you know, the crawling it, you know, like yeah. it was just like the high note, like it obviously respectable how he could do it. Yeah. But like it was it was a, a fun way to like make fun of of kind of like how you kind of like how you always do like your Fred Durst impression. Like there's like yeah. little things. It was that, just kind of like the eccentric yeah. of doing your own style. Mm -hmm. You know, like picking apart the things that make you stand out. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And that one did crawling fucking stands out. Though you know that that's Lincoln Park. Yeah. You know, um, in the end. You know, was coming out. I really like that song. Also, uh, when I was in middle school, and we would go to like school dances and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they would do like the DJ, which you know, obviously you know what the DJ. But they would also have a VJ, which is where they would have like a huge screen in the back, and they'd show like music videos as well as playing the songs. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. So that was like one of the few rock songs that they would play, but everybody would really enjoy it, which was yeah. crazy to me because like, you know, you think kids like 10, 11 year olds. You know, they just sort of like enjoy whatever they hear that sounds good. You know, they don't really yeah. dive in like what fits their personality. It's just whatever is fun and they enjoy it. They would play that song. Everybody would go crazy. Right. It was a fun time. I, I'd say that Linkin Park's one of those bands that were like really big to like most people. Like as far as like most of the kids in high school, college age, mm -hmm. you know, have always had that respect for them. But they never got to a state like Nickelback where they got ragged on. Mm, I don't know about that one. I I mean, that's a blanket statement. What I'm saying, but like they they well they never yeah they never got to where they were made fun of fully. But right. I mean they did they, they did yeah. yeah. But first songs like crawling. <laughs> no, like uh, a couple albums later, right, like, right. Whenever they started making really big changes, right, they were ragged on hard. Okay, they, now they didn't become the butt of every joke. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Nickelback yeah. is, but they did. Or Limp Biscuit. Limp Biscuit got that way pretty bad. Yeah. But Limp Biscuit Fred Durst deserves it. Himself. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't go on to a uh, MTV show and then try to go hook up with Britney Spears and then get ignored yeah. the whole time you're sitting behind her because she won't let you sit next to her. Yeah. You just flew out there for that. Yeah. And then go home empty-handed. So that, that yeah. he, he did it to himself. Yeah. There's a lot of things that I think Fred Durst, just that mentality, you know, that like, he, I don't he, know him as him, obviously, yeah. you know, but like what is exuded. He did it to himself. Yeah. That's all I can say. I mean, he, he, he thought he was bigger than what he was. Right. That's the problem. Fucking lead singers, man. <laughs> Fucking <laughs> Chad Kroger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so, yeah, man. What, real quick, was there any songs off this album that really stood out for you? Oh, good a good question. Good question. I got a list of them right here if you want to look at it. <laughs> I can I remember the whole album, but okay. I don't I don't have one that stands out. The only one that would have stood out wasn't released here. You're talking about high voltage by any chance? No, it was released it was extras on like the Japanese albums and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It was my December. Oh god, yeah. Yes. That was yeah. That yeah. was my favorite. And it might still be one, either my favorite or my top song by them of yeah, all time. Very, like, very beautiful. Uh, right. Uh, bit on the sad side, yes. you could say. Yeah. Um, but if you want to talk about, like, I mean, uh, there's a lot of songs on here that exude like a lot of energy and a lot of like well, that's, good, that's good strength. What it was, is yeah, that, that album was they, so high octane. I, I yeah, think that then song all of a is on I hear the, this song. I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. They can yeah. go soft too. Oh this yeah, is really good. Kind of, kind of, kind of. We we talked about them, but kind of like flaw. Yeah. Whenever yeah. they did the, the piano version of oh Only the Strong, God. like I mean that whole <laughs> album through the eyes, you're like bam, pow, 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 and then at the very end, da, 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 the most beautiful da, 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 da. song you've ever heard in your fucking yeah. life is like wow, I did not think you could do that, and you did it yeah. so damn well. Yeah, yeah, my December is totally that. Yeah, for Lincoln Park. Yeah, that would be my favorite one off that album. Um, I think it counts. Like Spotify will put it on there. Yeah, yeah. on the Hybrid Theory. Um, but yeah, it was a Japanese uh, album. It, it was a couple of countries that they only released it as a bonus. Uh, there was like three extra tracks on. I wonder it. why they did that. 
Uh, Why do they do that? Do you one? realize that movies it? cater to Asians? Mm. In, in <laughs> order to release their movie in their country, yeah. there has to be an Asian in the movie. Mm. So it, you, it, you notice that in huge blockbusters like yeah. fucking Transformers. Token Asian. That it yeah. is. They have to have something, <laughs> somebody that will get them into that country. So that might, might cool. be something similar with music. We don't, I don't well, know. Well, Mike right. Shinoda is like half Japanese, so maybe. Yeah. And he yeah. got some some like award for being Japanese or something like that. Like, he got that. an award. You can get awards for no, being Japanese. He got a, he, hey, <laughs> where's my award, bitches? He, he, he got an award for being Japanese and being awesome. Yeah. I think that's what really. Yeah. Seriously, that's what he. You know, what really, the only reason why we're why you're on the show today is because you're Asian. <laughs> I know. I, I no, in all in all reality, I relate very much to Mike. Like. Yeah, like well, them I, recording their album in mm-hmm. his bedroom. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah like, sure. The, we're yeah, yeah. recording our album in the bedroom. No, I was, I was like, honestly thinking the exact same thing in this research too. Yeah, especially your level, like you have a very dominant sort of personality that mm-hmm. I feel like uh, Mike Shinoda has, like in in the way that he cer- he pushes certain things, you know, to work and try not to be an asshole doing yeah. it. Yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. It hasn't always been successful. <laughs> <laughs> True. Um, but um, I'll go with the song that I dug. Okay. Uh, that stood out for me very specifically. Um, with you. With you. Yeah, that's a good one. With you is deep, and it hit me the hardest yeah. whenever Chester passed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I just I'd listen to that one. I mean, a, a lot of his songs talk about his depression. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, specifically, hybrid theory. Yeah. You know, and um, that not necessarily was the reason. I think it was more so just because that song hits me emotionally a little bit more. Yeah. Um, than any of the other songs on the album, just because of the musical aspect of it. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, how it works with with the vocals. You know, it's um, it's just fucking deep for me. Like the whole song, just how it works i remember uh we were listening to i think we listened to that song specifically when we were we were in the other room we were just jamming yeah some, yeah we did and uh that was the first time i'd heard that song in a really long time and uh yeah i was very surprised with how i mean i, I don't know if i would say i was surprised but like i, I remembered how like heavy some of their songs lyrically were yeah yeah and uh oh yeah especially like when you grow up and you experience life a little bit more and then you hear him talk about certain things it's like yeah. holy shit i relate to this song it's different now. Yeah. As, a kid, as, a kid, as a kid, yeah, as a kid, I mean, you just enjoy it for the energy right. and the overall. Well, like, even the angst was something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know, the words, the words, on Lincoln Park, to us as kids was just angst. But when you get older, you know, um, and become an adult, you see those words as a, maybe a little bit more serious. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. than than just I, I definitely know, talking to talk. Or, I, I definitely know hearing the words in the end, it doesn't really matter. It has a lot more meaning to me now yeah. than it ever did as a kid. Yeah. You know, it was just sort of like, okay. That sounds cool. Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. totally. Yeah, yeah. like, that sounds cool. And yeah. I, I wasn't crazy about Linkin Park, you know, even whenever Hybrid Theory uh, came out, you know, I'm, I'm only respecting them more and more, you know, as an adult, but... Um, it's one of those things that, yeah, like those lyrics would have meant more to me back then if I really had paid attention. Yeah. 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 I think so. And, and just get, being older and experiencing more shit. Yeah. You realize the value of each each of those words. Yep. You know what I mean? Um, so it was recorded at uh, NRG Recordings, uh, which is you know, with uh, Warner Brothers. Mm-hmm. I believe that's where Jimi Hendrix recorded one of his actually, albums. Actually, on the Meteora, making of Meteora album, uh, Chester Bennington says on, on the on the, the video, he says, uh, yeah, so uh, Jimi Hendrix uh, recorded uh, an album 30 years after he died. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's how cool this studio is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were funny people. Yeah. Uh, like Linkin Park, they're hilarious. I like them. Um, it was certified gold in five weeks. Yeah. Uh, best-selling album of the year. Yep. And um, Shinoda did the artwork for this one, mm-hmm. spray painting. Uh, Chester had the idea of a dragonfly w- as a soldier. Yeah. You know, uh, talking about having that heart of uh, being hard and, and sticking through it, being a soldier, but also like the sensitivity or I don't know what word he used, but something along the lines of having the dragonfly. Okay. Wings. That's interesting. And uh, so 
Shinoda did that. Um, it was certified diamond by the RIAA. And, uh, it's fucking ridiculous. Multi platinum in other countries as well. Yep. Like, do you even have to bother saying that they're multi platinum? Just go straight to diamond. Like, that's just fucking <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. Like, I think the only other person who I knew who went to diamond, I know there's other musicians that w- went that far, but yeah. to me, my knowledge, only other person who I remembered that went to that that far, fucking Shaggy. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> call me on the counter. <laughs> it wasn't me. Like, that fucking guy went diamond. Like, ridiculous, man. I didn't buy that fucking album. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I sure as shit listened to that song and the his cover of Angel. And, yeah. Yeah, fucking ridiculous stuff. Anyways. <laughs> I listened to a song today from All for One. Oh, yeah. Was it I Swear? <laughs> I Swear. <Yeah>. Oh. <laughs> the cover. <laughs> yeah. You're going to my era, buddy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> Um, I don't know why I brought that to the table. That's okay. <laughs> Way to suck. Uh, anybody want to mention anything else about Hybrid Theory while we're on it? Um, I, I, I shot him up, obviously. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it was, know, it was it was the big one for them. A, a fantastic on the debut. Fucking radar. Yeah. Do you think that's what took him over the top, or do you think it was later? I think that they were able to consistently stay on top. I mean, not necessarily stay exactly same status, mm-hmm. but um, I I think Meteora is being able to come out with Meteora after this at some point mm-hmm. is is really for you know, and then minutes to midnight. I mean, we'll talk about all that shit later. <laughs> what I what I what I could say to that is it, it, it's hard to really say if it got them on top because like they got here with Hybrid Theory. And then they just kept getting higher and higher and higher throughout, you know, their progression as a band. So like them making the top never really seemed suiting because like they were just constantly always on top. They were on top. Yeah. You know, they they were they were the king of the mountain for first real album. You know, their first solid fucking album was like unimaginable. Yeah. You know how how great it did. Um, Like I said, this is my favorite album, but. Mostly because of personal past uh, experiences. Yeah. When it comes to actually better songs, I don't even know if this would for me. Yeah. Um, uh, so after Hybrid Theory, um, they did a remix album, which a lot of us know of as... Reanimation. 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 Uh, uh, very hip-hop. Very. Uh, uh, but I, I want to say real quick that one of, if not the one of the best songs I've, I've ever heard in my life, or at least covered, I don't know what you yeah. would call it, was when Aaron Lewis jumped yes. on. Oh for, shit! I didn't for, yes. for crawling. You he never, did crawling. You yeah. never heard that song. I did not hear that. I just. I want to. I will you. do this. I'll like will, I honestly want to stop you right now. <laughs> no. It. It. Dude. Cool. It. It's so. It's one of those when you hear it and then Aaron Lewis starts to come in vocally. It gives you goosebumps. Yeah. Your ha- Your hairs will stand on your arms. It's so fucking good. We're speaking, of course, of Aaron Lewis of the band Stained. Yes. Who, yeah. at, at this point, I think they were just doing Break the Cycle. Oh, okay. I think around this was the time period of Break that the Cycle. And they were doing Break the Cycle, yeah. That might yeah. be like 97. No, it wasn't 97. Break the Cycle? Break the Cycle was like early, no, late 90s, early 2000s, I feel. I could be wrong. They might Anyways. have been touring it and maybe going to the second yeah, album. Yeah, I think. I'm pretty well, sure it was Break the Cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Era. Um, okay. So you kind of get this so. idea of who uh, Aaron Lewis is okay. with his music. I mean, outside, it's been a while. I mean, they had a lot of sad, angry songs. Yeah. And whenever you put that on top of a song like Crawling, and not just that, what they did to the to the song itself, because they took out a lot of the instruments and they yes. put in other instruments. That's cool. I mean, they kind yeah. of they brought the orchestration up. They took really all of like the the drums and all of like the the rhythm stuff to it, and they put a lot more right in, everything else. Yeah, yeah, and they just sort of like just it, it started off smooth, and once the choruses come in, it just sort of just beautifully I did, goes. I up, did like know? that aspect of reanimation where they just redid these songs yeah a yeah. lot of them were done the way that they wanted to do them in the studio um but they didn't have any control at the time i like how they had a lot of other people involved in like yeah. the production of these two like jay gordon from orgy oh yeah that's cool Boo. that was cool though <laughs> i like hey, i like i like orgy i know that's i do the... i do like orgy point being is that they had a lot of other people come yeah. in yeah. even i figured this out today Fucking Stephen uh, Stephen Carpenter. Yeah, oh. he was on for one track, and it was a fucking phone call. 
Yeah. <laughs> he was no like, way. Uh, seriously, he was like, hey, it's Steph. Uh, give me a call back if you want me to be on the album. Uh, it was The song's literally like 10 seconds of Steph just being like, hey, just give me a call back and I'll, you know, I'm in town. Uh, just give me a call back if you want me to be on the album. That was fucking it. <laughs> That's him being on the album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucking Which gold, sucks. dude. Yeah. I would love to have heard, I would still would like to hear Steph or some people from the Deftones. Oh, yeah, that'd be a great Lincoln combination. Park. Yeah, for sure. That would be great. Marilyn Manson did a uh, remix of uh, the song uh, By Myself, mm-hmm. but um, instead of B-Y myself, it's B-U-Y. Oh, okay. Because gotcha. that's the kind of personality the Marilyn Manson has <laughs> and the shit that he brings to the table. But it sold 300,000 copies in the first week. Yeah. I think it, did it have Jay-Z on that? I no, that was, so. that was that's later. That yeah, was a yeah. whole different album. Okay, yeah. right, right. They they hit it up with him one time. Yeah. Oh, they had uh one of the uh, they they had a lot of different rappers on that too. That yeah, was pretty cool. You know, Points of Authority was fucking yeah. that, yeah. that, that was fucking. That. Remember the music video for that one? Yeah, that was weird as shit. Yeah, it was like a video game, <laughs> like, like yeah. all like the fucking okay. robots. And so the, what it was was there was these robots, <laughs> right? <laughs> robots that were controlled by. The members of the band's heads. And that's it. And uh, the robots were trying to save the world from aliens. For real, this is the fucking story of the the music video. So they were fighting. It was like warfare to protect the Earth. It reminded From me aliens. of it reminded me of like Star Fox for some strange reason, but that's just me. It was a, it was a very video game feel. Yeah. yeah. Well, the the graphics were CGI. Yeah. yeah. They yeah. weren't that great at the time. They were not. Yeah. They were they were bad. But damn yeah. it, they went for it. That it was, fuck it was yeah. Cool. It was... One step <laughs> yeah. ahead of everybody. Yeah, you got to think they did that. Nobody else had done it, and then they built on that and kept doing it. And yeah. Then eventually they start throwing CGI in that nobody had even thought of. Right. 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 So that shit was wild. Yeah. Uh, for me, with that album, I think Points of Authority and Crawling were probably like the ones that stood out the most. I mean, I I had the album, and I, I definitely know I listened to it, but uh, we want to talk about songs that really stuck, especially Crawling. Yeah. I mean, whenever we were talking about like if we were to put something on there, I was torn between my December and Crawling with oh, yeah. Aaron Lewis like that. It, I would probably do Crawling with Aaron Lewis because most people have not heard that, and it's I have not heard that. Do you want to you want to use that as your song? We can. Okay, yeah, let's do that. All right, we we get. One minute on the on the podcast, but we can listen to the whole thing. That's fine. Okay. All right. Well, here we go. What's it called? Crawling off the reanimation with featuring Aaron Lewis. So, uh, did you get the goosebumps, or what did you feel? Uh, I think that my balls dropped for the first time. <laughs> and, uh, no, it was, it was definitely a pretty awesome song, especially with Aaron Lewis's vocals on it. Yeah. And, okay, especially the strings. Yes, yeah. the know. strings. And hearing it off of a decent sound system like what we have yeah. for the first time, and hearing everything just sort of, like, work its way up. I was like, yeah. yeah, it's very, the very constant well build and yeah. Yeah. drop and... My thing is this, that this was their second somewhat album. Yeah. And they were creating things like this. Yeah. Yeah. Who else was doing things well, like also, that? Well, also, what I liked about this album specifically was the fact that there were a lot of songs that they did and they, like, reconstructed. Like, you, the guitars are different. It's yeah. not just like a remix where you remix with the same fucking yeah. things that you put in there. It's like a remix as in let's... This like like what we song. used to do. Whenever we, we would have music yeah. as a band. Uh, listeners, uh, Gary Gary was in the same band as me and Nico. Um, yes, was. Uh, we would write music, 
and you know we'd work on it and we'd love it and then mm-hmm. eventually we'd be like we could actually do more with this yeah we could do and better. then we'd, we'd start working on parts to develop and it'd eventually be like a, a fucking entirely new song but i mean it's one of those things like they they have their album that is fucking multi-platinum or whatever yeah you know and uh they <laughs> They're able to find ways to make it even better. Like, well, that's fucking crazy. Sticking, yeah. sticking, not to focus so much on us, but if you, you take a song like Unreal, yeah. and how it was like really great with one guitar, but then as soon as like the second guitar came in that, yeah. You, yeah. that you put to it, it completely changed the overall emotion, overall feeling to it. Yeah. That I remember at one point, someone yeah. was like, they didn't like the new version. They liked the old version because it was <laughs> yeah. heavier, where yeah. the second version had a little bit more melody or a little yeah. you know, rhythm to it or whatever. Sure. So it was like two different, two different feelings... But we st- it started off as one thing, and then we went into it, and we right. created like a whole different feeling by adding on to it and changing things up to it. Yeah. So. The fist song. Yeah. Yeah. That was a good one, and then uh, no, no remorse, remorse for course. sure. That was a whole different song. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of songs that we did. Um. Holy crap! I can't remember the name. Whole new lie. Whole new lie. Yeah. When we added the second guitar part. Yeah. That oh, became yeah. a beast. Oh, for sure. I don't remember the first version of it though, because we never recorded it. Yeah, I don't remember how to play it. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was my favorite one. That was a good one. Your favorite one was uh, Numb? Numb? Yeah, Numb yeah. was good. Nah. If we go back into the studio, <laughs> I'm just saying. The Numb, I've, I've got all my chips. Yeah. Um, um, I, w- I have to say something with this album. Okay. Uh, as a band, I feel like this is where, this isn't where they got big, but this is where they... Proved themselves. No, this is where they realized something and they did something that other bands are too scared to do. All right, so most bands, if you think about it, they will get their fans, and then they, they have a style, and they have these things that they do, and they're really good at it. And they're, they're, each album after that is the same thing but different. Yeah. All right? That's their comfort zone. It keeps them, yeah. it, it keeps either keeps their fans or they might get a few new yeah. fans. Yeah. Linkin Park did not do that. Linkin Park said, after this, after reanimation, I think that's when they realized, okay, we can keep doing this, and we can keep our fans. Yeah, or we can grow, and we can yeah. actually truly try to do something different every time. Yeah, and by doing that, we will lose fans, we will gain fans, and we'll keep doing it. And that's the one thing that they did that not very many people have done. Not very many bands are are willing to try. Yeah, because you could end up losing it all. You could sure. end up losing all your fans. But they did it, and they would constantly lose fans, and yeah. they would cost, constantly yeah. gain fans. Lincoln Park was not a forever for most part was not a forever fan band yeah what i mean by that is most people did not stick with them all the way through sure but that sure. was that wasn't what they wanted yeah they wrote their albums for the new fans yeah that's why they take, take risks yeah it, each album it was they weren't worried about okay yeah you liked hybrid right. theory that was 10 years ago we don't care about it anymore yeah if you don't like what we're gonna do there's a billion people. There's billions of people in this world. They will like it. Somebody else will like it. Sure. Yeah. And they took the risk, and it paid off for them time and time and time again. Yeah. Oh, so, and and every album is different. Yes, it's very mm-hmm. different. They like every time they push themselves to do something completely different, and they did, and they would they would lose fans. You would have all these people yeah. saying, "What is this? What is this?" Yeah. And then you would have all these other people saying, "Ooh, what is this? What? Right, <laughs> let right. me check this out." So the same same thing, but same this, thing in a different way. This is the change because after this next yeah. album, similar but different, m- more different, and then it just kept going. You ready? Yeah, yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> this is probably, in my opinion, one of the better produced ones. Like the, I mean, they were all pr- produced pretty well, but this album is just so fucking clean. Yeah, like it's so incredibly clean. Um, Meteora. Okay, uh, came out March 25th, 2003. Uh, same people, same studio. Energy Studio. Mm-hmm. Warner Brothers. Okay, it's a uh, Meteora is like a Greek Orthodox ministry. Okay, it's a very specific spot, I believe, in Greece. Like like a weird mountain it's a place. shape. Yeah. It's a place, mm-hmm. yeah. And it looks fucking amazing. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I don't know necessarily why they wanted to choose that, but other outside of the fact that it's just cool. Yeah. You know? Um, and Meteora means something different now. It's a fucking album, dude. And like a solid good album. I mean, 27 million copies worldwide. Six times platinum. 
Yep. R I A A. Uh, produced with Don Gilmer, which I believe was uh, uh, on the first album too. I think so. Um, so obviously they had a fucking making of Meteora uh, video that I watched that Nico told me about, which was fucking great. Yeah, I it, watched it, it multiple times. Yeah, I, I remember when the album came out. It was like a DVD that came with the album, I believe. Yeah. And uh, that was probably like the first ever like making of yeah. like sort of documentary thing that I'd ever seen. Oh, Again, wow. ahead of the time, one step ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, and it was so fucking good too because yeah. it was like it was a lot of like really useful information. You yes, know? it was like uh, you know it was like you know a showcase special <laughs> yeah. for their days. Yeah, uh, they they definitely. I mean, they they show like what works for them, but also like just gives you like you know for me like at the time. I, I obviously I didn't think anything of it, but now when I, I I watch it and I see like Mike Shinoda like talk about like ideas like mm-hmm. for like specifically for somewhere I belong the story behind that that song how yeah, that was yeah. created how someone came in with an idea and he's like okay yeah I like it it sounds good but it's just something not right about yeah. it you know mm-hmm. yeah. hearing him like that is like in my mind is like that's kind of how I feel like I I approach right. music now and or you know like. Taking an idea and just sort of thinking, what, what can we do with it? What can make it better? And how sure. in depth he goes into it, you know. So I feel like it's a lot more, um, a lot more educational. I guess you could say a lot more inspirational. It, not only that, like you get a sense of the dynamic of, yeah. of the people, the human beings in this project. You know, that's where I saw like Shinoda and uh, Bennington like working together specifically. Yeah, you know, and. Um, Let's talk about this rundown of the of the songs, man. Yeah, the, to me, this, in my opinion, this was probably like it had like probably what, had the four, most hits. Probably like four singles on it. I think four. at least four. I mean, I mean, somewhere I belong, uh, faint, uh, breaking the habit, and uh, numb. I believe. I would say that don't stay might probably be a hit, one of those too. Don't stay. Yeah, don't say, don't stay. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't a single. It wasn't a single. No. Okay. It was definitely a fucking hit. Yeah, though. yeah. There, there, there's like a hell of a lot of good songs on this album yeah. that could have easily. I mean, to me, I think "Lying from You" could have easily been a really lying. Great. Oh yeah, fucking yeah. yeah, dude. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, uh, easier to run. That was a really heavy one for me. I remember uh, just the overall like feeling of it, and like also how like really emotional like that song got. Like there was a lot of like heavier songs, especially "Numb." I, I mean, I think everyone sort of. I think "Don't and, Stay" was really a good one to. St- kick it off mm-hmm. yeah. you know what I mean because they have a, like forward which is like one of those few second tracks yeah. Yeah. that go into don't stay and then you know like yeah. fucking uh. what was the song that we were talking about before with the lights in the background a uh, faint that is okay yeah okay, okay. so that's is that the, that's the one where he does that really epic scream right yeah okay this just before this album and the, you know his scream was so huge and heavy, and he carries yeah. it, mm-hmm. and he changes notes and everything. And everybody's like, "Oh, he had vocal cancer, stuff like that." Huh. Do you know what was really going on? No, uh-uh. no. All right. So if you listen to any live footage before Meteora, he wasn't always on. Okay. He wasn't always on. Like he he'd be kind of flat. He'd be kind of nasally. It wasn't always great. The dude had a hiatal hernia. Mm. Which basically means this guy's stomach yeah. got pushed up above his diaphragm. What? Yeah. Then he was touring with this. He was singing with this. He was recording with this. No. So that's why like, he would be singing or screaming and he would be throwing up in his mouth at the same time because it, it basically leaks all the acid out. And, it, and that's Dude. what was causing him to not be great all that time. And then yeah. finally between reanimation and Meteora, he went and got it fixed. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden, okay. boom, powerhouse. Damn. Right. Yeah. And then in the middle of recording this fucking album, right? Like, you know how they do an album where it's usually do the vocals last? Yeah. He got sick. Mm. Uh. <laughs> they had to, he was sick for five fucking weeks. Yeah. And he could not record. And they were doing most of the fucking mixing and shit. Yeah. Like, while he was like, well, I can't fucking do anything. I'm pretty fucking useless right now. Yeah. Yeah, add that in with all the depression this motherfucker had. (laughs) Dude. Yeah, or how many times they had to, like, postpone or cancel parts of tours and things like that because of him. Right. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah. But they made fucking solid gold. Yeah. They shit gold. 
Oh, yeah. They shit gold. <laughs> they had golden toilets that they shit in. They right. were like <laughs> gold. They yeah. were like <laughs> hens that have gold nuggets. That yeah. Or eggs. Uh, something we haven't even done yet is sort of like talk about like some really good things about each member. I mean, obviously we could talk all day about Chester, but like about their musical. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. uh, this album for me was whenever I started to really, really, really dig uh, the guitar player. Oh uh, yeah, Brad. Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's. He reminds me of you and how you play. That really makes me upset because I don't like how he plays. Oh, well, he plays Brad good. Is, Brad's one of my least favorite guitar players. Well, let me explain what I mean by that. <laughs> uh, given the time period, this was 2003, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, still with what I was listening to at the time, there was a lot of this. There was a lot of Stained. Yes. So like these guys and uh, Brad and Mike Mushock, like, they're sort of like octave chords and like lower tunings and yeah. stuff like that. Like hearing stuff that he was doing on like somewhere I belong for the first time hearing that as like, holy shit, this doesn't sound anywhere close to like the standard, like regular guitar playing that I'm hearing. Like I'm hearing like, like now I know exactly what he's doing, but right. at the time it's yeah. sort of like, whoa, like what the <laughs> fuck? Hey, M- M- Mushok is uh, stained, right? Yes. Yeah, it's stained. Okay. That, I guess stained and cold mixed you up. You want to talk about a fucking... That's a beast uh, right a, there. Yeah, yeah, warlord of guitar playing. Uh, yeah. Shout out to Mike Mushok. Even at his right. age now, he still headbangs oh better God. than most kids. Like yeah. he's jumping and tossing his guitar. Like he's ridiculous. Yeah. I'm... I'm I'm getting too excited. I want to talk more about <laughs> state, but anyways, um, but okay. So yeah, like at the time, hearing what he was doing, you can say whatever you want about him now, but at the time, yeah, hearing that style, hearing stuff he was doing, is like wow, this is like really great stuff. That Phoenix was doing on the bass was like yeah. very groovy, very Fuck fun. Yeah. Um, their drummer, he had like some solid beats in him. Like everybody yeah. was really, really good. Yeah. With whether and like yeah. for me, this was like the beginning of like noticing their capability and like stuff they were doing that was just sounding really great. Yeah. That made me, it made me want to uh, invest more of my time into listening to it. That way I can enjoy the greatness of it all. Yeah. My thing so. with Brad or is it Brad? It is Brad. It is Brad. My thing with Brad is I was always a fan of his work mm-hmm. until I saw that they tried to push him to actually do more mm. and realized he can't. Mm. Mm. He's, he, he basically became he's a studio guitarist but right. for this band that's okay. what, that's the way i see him because they can come up with a bunch of different stuff he can throw a riff in that makes a song pop which okay. is awesome but if you tell him hey try to put a lead part right there it ain't happening right and then if you ask him to do it live i watched 10 different videos of the same song trying to see him do his lead part and he fucked it up every single time oh no <laughs> so that was like okay I know what you're capable of, what you do, you do it well, yeah. get back in your box because you <laughs> right. don't belong outside of it. Get back in your box and you'll be good. <laughs> right, right. That's my wow. thing about him. But other than that... I didn't like, see, I didn't know that. I only hear what I hear on the album. Exactly. I, I, I dive in, when I like a band, I dive in, I look at everything. Okay. And that's that was my... This was recent. You think, you think Mike was, Shinoda writes a lot of the riffs? Mike Shinoda? Yeah. Yeah. I know, because he, I mean, he does rhythm guitar a lot too. Yeah. Like, I, I have a feeling... Uh, Brad will come up with a lot and then yeah. Mike will polish it. Sure. And then it gets put on the record. Okay. Or Brad will come or Mike will come up with it and then yeah. Brad plays it. I mean, whichever one's better for the song. So that's, I don't know. That Brad isn't my favorite. That just made me super upset. <laughs> <laughs> well, sorry to do that too, <laughs> but I just wanted to say. I mean those words. I, I definitely just wanted you? to say that. At the time period, <laughs> hearing some of the chords and some of the stuff that he was doing was yeah. a very first for me yeah. to where it it made me like intrigued by actual guitar playing. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. It's like wow, this is like cool. St- I mean, uh, I mean, riffing is really cool and soloing is really cool, but like just hearing like stuff that makes you go, wow, how did he do that? Yeah, yeah. When I, it, all of it was was just some octave power chord thing. It was like I get that because you're a drummer. Oh, for sure. <laughs> I get that. But like me being yeah. a guitarist and bass player for so long, like. Hearing and we keep bringing up Stain, mm-hmm. what learning how to do Mike Mushak stuff. Yeah, that yeah. for me was like holy crap. Oh right, god, right, yeah. right. what are you doing, sir? And then and then like then you go from something like that, and then you come over to Lincoln Park, and you're like, oh. Well, no, but I mean, like you 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 listen to Don't Stay. Yeah, and like uh, the um, I don't I don't know exactly. I, I guess it was a um, like a hook. Mm-hmm. You know, towards the end of the song, it's like, like yeah. hitting one of those 
off notes you just wouldn't expect for the song was something that reminded me of something that you would do okay. just to kind of create an exciting element that extra element you know. that you're not expecting yeah exactly yeah. you know just kind of to, to i do like to do that to tease <laughs> the listener yeah you know what i mean and uh make that, them go oh what's that that's yeah. what i was thinking whenever i heard that i was like okay yeah okay. i could that's uh, i definitely heard gary i'll accept that <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I made my piece. You're good. <laughs> um, other stuff on this album, I guess. I think there was like maybe one song. I think it was uh, Session, where it was kind of like a break away from everything that they were doing, and like it was a lot of like drum stuff going on. Yeah. And I want to say Mike Shinoda was probably rapping a lot on it. It yeah. was very just. It, it's it was very much like the standout. Where not so much that it was like stand out and it was great but it was just sort of like you you get a rhythm going for what's going on and then bam this happens out of nowhere yeah you know stuff like that was kind of fun somewhere i belong yeah i like it yeah that was a pretty fucking deep one uh, uh the music video where he pretty much goes inside his own head yeah it's kind of what i got from the the music video it was uh, it was deep man i got a quick story about that i don't want to take too much time on it um when I was a kid, uh, I've seen, I, one of the first instruments I played was bass, and I was heavily influenced by Wes Borland, the way that he would play, like a showmanship. Right. And uh, I used to just air guitar in my room, just rocking out to different songs, and I would rock out to that one. And I guess at the time period, my brother, he was still in high school, and he was in theater arts, mm -hmm. and I think one of the things that they did was they would do like music videos in like what, in like what was the black box room or whatever. Like they would record, right. like they would play the music in the back, and then like they would like do music videos pretty much yeah, yeah. and uh he was like yeah me and some of the guys we're gonna do somewhere i belong by lincoln park and i need you to give some sort of choreography to my buddy who's like so stiff and he doesn't <laughs> know how to do anything like just give him some pointers on what to do and like literally like i'm just like rocking out and he's watching me and he, my brother's watching me with like a, a notepad and he's like <laughs> okay so for the verse he he's kind of crouched down doing some sort of like crab looking thing <laughs> and then for the chorus he's jumping around you know like it was really weird because I was I feel like I was auditioning for somebody right? and he's like watching uh, every move and writing everything down and I was like this is fucking crazy but yeah, yeah. That, that, that's sort of what I liked about that song was just like it had a lot of energy and if you were to play it you just like be jumping around and oh, having yeah. fun stuff like that so that's definitely a fun memory that I have to that song yeah man that uh that album was fucking yeah, it was great. Great. yeah there's I'm looking at it. I don't see a single bad song on this album. Yeah. Not in my... Faint yes. was good. Uh, lying, lying From You. How, how did that one go? I know I loved it. Uh, I can't think of I remember the music. Oh, yeah. The guitar <laughs> riff was fucking <laughs> insane, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Is this yeah, no, it was the <laughs> the the, uh, the um the DJ, the sampling and shit. Oh, okay, yeah, like that stuff was like uh really fucking pure. That's one. That's one thing we haven't talked about either. Fucking Joe, Joe Hahn. Hahn. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I, they were talking about it on Meteor. He he does his. Thing. Everybody else does the rock thing, and he works in his own fucking box with yeah. his own stuff. That's fucking cool, and his style is so fucking pure. Yeah, like the it's just a clean sound, like what he comes up with. And then whenever you bring the rock element to that, it is such a good, solid fucking sound. Yeah, you know that's like uh, what bringing me the horizon did. Yeah, when yeah, they yeah. when they got the keyboardist, yeah, right, right, right. He did his thing with the singer. Yeah, and then they brought in the rock. That's that's a good sound. Yeah, that's a great idea. I like um, that idea. Uh, so, um, in the um, in the video, they also had a, a part where they were talking about like the album artwork for this. They yeah. they got the whole band involved, and they started spray painting some shit, trying to make some really cool art for the album. Mm -hmm. And they ended up using a picture of them working on the art. Yeah, it wasn't even them; it was somebody else, I believe. Oh, was it? That was doing the spray painting. Like, they just saw him doing his thing. Yeah. And then they snagged a picture of it. Yeah, yeah. Thought, yeah, that was it. But it was all for the artwork yeah. for When you see, album. like, this guy spray, and he had, like, the cool, like, uh, breathing mask. Yeah, yeah. Like, it looked like, almost like, we, we mentioned their street team earlier. Yeah. Like, they have a graffiti feel to the band. Like, that's the aesthetic of Linkin Park. Yeah. It's like that well, graffiti just, subculture. Just before this album is when they created LP Underground. Mm. What? 
That's that's their like street that's team. Their, that's their fan okay. base. Yeah. That's, that, well, not such. That's part of their street team, but it's also that's where their fans go. That's their fan their fan yeah. side. Their that was their thing. Very which, Banksy man. Yeah, yeah. So like the whole thing was, and then uh, just before this was the first Project Revolution tour. Okay. So you think about this. Their tour is Project Revolution. Right. LP Underground. Like their yeah. whole thing is about rebel. They and have this militant and, yes, feel yeah. to it. That's what they, the they did for a long time. The, the, the yeah. flags and the soldier with yeah. dragon flag. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <wings. laughs> it, was af- it was after this album that I first saw Linkin Park. Okay. I haven't. I haven't. I am do, do we want to so get into, uh, Do you want to get into that or do you want to go to Minutes to Midnight? Oh. Uh, well, we, oh, there's we, also we, a section between. We can go, yeah. We, we can keep going, and uh, we can wait till minutes midnight because okay. they did play some songs. Okay, that gotcha. too. okay. So, um, from 2004 to 2006, they had they were just kind of really focusing on their side projects. They weren't really working so much on Lincoln Park as much as they they uh, Chester worked with DJ Lethal um, mm-hmm. and his band uh, Dead by Sunrise. Which is I listened to. Uh, I feel like I crawl listened to them in. once at one point. I listened to "Crawl Back In." There's a music video for it. It's mm-hmm. actually really fucking good. I'm not gonna lie. I thought it was good. <laughs> um, I mean, you just think about Lincoln Park without the hip hop element. Yeah. Okay. That's not bad at all. That's no. That's good. Um, Chester's definitely strong, or d- was definitely strong enough to carry his own band if he wanted to. Sure. Yeah. I mean. The tool band thing. Um, <laughs> if he had a good band, something. yeah. If he had yeah. a good band, if he, yeah, and he yeah. Went out, he could definitely have done it, right? And I would also imagine after working with Mike Shinoda and the rest of the guys, you know, you're already a better musician. Just you, you, you got the rub filling the space. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you, you definitely get a good feel of what it's supposed Doo-doo. to be like. Yeah. That whenever he was younger in the in the other band, uh, Gray Days. You know, yeah. he was still learning the ropes. He, he didn't know what it was like to be multi platinum. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know, um, multiple times. <laughs> so, um, Shinoda did something with Depeche Mode and Jay Z. Um, and he also had Fort Minor. Yeah, which I really liked Fort Minor. Yeah, Fort Minor was cool. Yeah. Uh, I liked where, it. Where'd you go? I miss you so. Where'd yes. you go? Yeah. Yeah, that was such a, that was a beautiful that song. Was, uh, the one that they used on the NBA a lot. Uh, oh, 10 percent da 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 da. The like, energy that, of that was. Oh, was, I, I remember, remember like that. trying to ca- keep up with them. Is like, is this 100 percent? Are you going past? 100? You're like some <laughs> weird number. Like 10 percent. Uh, yeah, 10 percent <laughs> something and 2 percent this and 5 percent something and 70 percent something. It's like your math is way off, Mike. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was cool. And what weren't they doing like executioner stuff as well? During this I don't remember or? when that was. I, I remember uh, Mike Shinoda was in one of their videos. I just know it's going down. Well, yeah, that one had Wayne Static. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that was, was. I want to say was, was that during after Meteor or was it that, just before? I don't know. It probably was before. I have a feeling like it, I think it was like right after in the end. Yeah, I feel like it was before. Probably, yeah. It was. It had. To, I would imagine it was right after Reanimation. I don't know. I think Executioners were on Reanimation. Yeah, so. they were. Oh, yeah. So it was either right probably about the same right, time. Yeah. But yeah, that it song, was definitely. Bef- I would say it was, definitely it was like three DJs. Meteor. It was Mike Shinoda. It was uh, Wayne Static. Yeah, and, and then I think Phoenix and and Rob. Okay, okay. We're also in it. Yeah, it was. I think they only had that one that song. That was fun. I remember yeah. where he smacks the camera. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, Mike they, Shinoda they, they had They were doing that, other things at the time. Had a fucking solid rap element. Like, you'd yeah. want him on your track. Yeah. You would certainly want him. You'd want Ice Cube on your track, you know? There, there is something about Mike Shinoda. I don't know if you want to... It's his charisma or just sort of, like, the... Uh, what it brings... Like, he has, like, uh, I don't know, just good energy to him. Yeah. That it definitely takes it up. Like, especially when he's when he's rapping. Yeah. You know, whenever he breaks it down and he does his, his slower stuff, like, it's cool. You know, but when he has his energy, like it's I really... get the feeling when I listen to Lincoln Park songs that uh, you hear Chester Bennington's pain, yes, and then you feel you hear Mike Shinoda making sense out of it. That makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like he he it all it's almost like you know Chester's got the tears, and then Mike Shinoda's got the solution. You know what I mean? I get that. But that's what I. That, that's why it's a full, complete sound because you have a full, complete cycle. You know, of emotion, of how to deal with it. You know, it's almost like you, you have somebody speaking for you that can kind of like 
kind of mend all your thoughts and make sense of them. Like yeah. that, that's what I feel about. I could, I could definitely relate to that in a way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think some of our music making process where yes. a lot of things that were going on in the inside for me uh, usually would be figured out whenever you would lay some piece of music down and even without even talking about it, like yeah. you, would, yeah. you would you would have the answer. <laughs> and I don't know if it's just some sort of vibe that you pick off of me from so many years of uh, making music together. But and I could I probably could do the same thing with you where it's, you just get the energy and you kind of get a sense of it. And then you just sort of play something and like, bam, like you that that cured everything that yeah. fixed everything, you know, so sure. Absolutely. I, I think that just comes with uh, good. Uh, What's it called? Wherever good chemistry. Good chemistry. Good chemistry. All right. Are you ready for minutes of midnight? Yeah, let's do this one. I, I, right. This, this is this is uh, out of the three CDs that I have in my car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> minutes of the midnight is definitely one of them. Yeah. Um, I I remember when this album came out. Uh, I, I enjoyed it, but I remember this is when I was starting to notice that other people around me were not liking Lincoln Park anymore. Right. And right, I think I, I think it was kind of I think they were used to something like the more hip hop type of stuff. And I think with this one, yeah. um, what was the? I mean, it makes sense to uh, what what uh, Gary was saying of like they just kept changing their cha- their fan base yeah. because yeah. The, yeah. well, this was their biggest biggest change. Yeah, and yeah. before um, that, it was similar to hybrid theory but not the same uh given up and bleed it out were like really aggressive songs yes, very yeah. screaming and like um fucking the breakdown for um given up yeah that's what da, i wanted da, to da, talk da, about da, 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 i, I want to talk da, da, about uh given <laughs> up um <laughs> the old pig squeal yeah <laughs> uh, <laughs> i feel and i was saying this to you the other day nico I, I think that given up is one of the songs that if there wasn't a lincoln park before and it was just another band that wrote and recorded and played this one song this song alone would be a fucking hit single yeah like on its own mm-hmm. like it holds so much value and it showcases uh chester's voice like the energy is so fucking insanely powerful. The, the scream. Yeah. That there, lasted there's a, a part, whole fucking two minutes. <laughs> the put me out of my misery, yeah. put me out of my fucking misery, and then he does that long scream, yeah. and then he goes straight back into the fucking chorus with this so is, much power. This is the song I was talking about. So it was between Me- Meteora, and this, and Meteora and this one that he had the surgery. Okay. Okay, yeah. okay. Okay, that that makes sense. That's what I was thinking you were talking about. Um, But yeah. This th- that specific song proved a lot of fucking shit right there yeah. with Chester. Um, that was his comeback of hey, I I'm I was good before, mm-hmm. but now I can ne- now yeah. I can exist and not be nauseous all yeah. day long. Oh yeah, for sure. This is definitely at least that song. It was sort of like, fuck yeah, Chester, you got it, man. Yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> like you, was, you were great before, but fuck yeah, now. You yeah. Know? Fuck I remember yeah. I was in traffic in Houston when I heard that song, and I was sitting there, and then right. like. I was like, okay, this is Lincoln Park. This is cool. This is cool. And then he hits that note. And I'm like, that's that way. He's still going. Yeah. Yeah. He's still going. <laughs> he did. Holy shit. He's still going. And he changed notes. Yeah. Wow. Screw right. Okay, I'm back. I'm a Lincoln Park. And fan. then <laughs> it's like, as soon as he goes right back into that chorus yeah. after that, every fucking energy in your body's like, yes, 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 dude. Yes. yes you're fucking you. doing I, it. <laughs> I watched a, a live. This, this is when I realized a hundred percent that this guy could tap into a source yeah. that nobody else could tap into. Right. They were doing a, one of those, you know, those little live uh, internet, vi- you know, things where they play their songs. Mm-hmm. Well, they were doing one of those with no audience. Yeah. No yeah. audience. And they did this song. So they're playing this, this song, which is a huge high energy song with no audience. And he has to do that. You being a vocalist, yeah. when the crowd is getting into it, it's easier for you to take it sure. up that night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's nobody there but camera. Yeah, and he took it there. He hit it perfect. Held it. I was like, he's probably not going to do it the whole way. He held it, kept it going, and then changed the note. And without a beat, without even, he just barely taking the smallest of breath, he was in the chorus and he didn't miss anything. Yeah, and that's man. with nothing fueling him besides himself. It's amazing. Yeah, that that honestly, like, because I was already out of really feeling Lincoln Park at this time. Whenever I heard this, and then I heard that song, and I'm like. Dude, <laughs> this guy is fucking phenomenal. Yeah, yeah. he really is. Uh, quick question. Sorry if this is distracting or not, but it is. Who, who did it better? Uh, the Scream and Given Up 
with Chester don't or you do it. or the long note don't you do it. and Judith by Don't you do it. I knew it. Maynard oh, James Tucker. I, I saw it coming. I you know what as much as I love Maynard's music and a perfect circle and specifically the song Judith, Judith yeah. that's that's a special spot in all of our hearts. Yeah. yeah. Uh listeners that was our band song. We yeah, play yeah. that song before every fucking practice for <laughs> real. Yeah. Um so yeah, as much as I love that song and that song means a lot to me, I'd still have to give so much more props to Chester for okay. that. I get that. I have to. I have to. I'm sticking with Maynard. <laughs> like I I'm not, It's understandable. I totally understand. My I, thing is this. It is a really close decision. Like it's not like I'm going to be like, "Ah, yeah, no, Chester's like way back." No, dude. Like Chester killed it. But Chester Maynard killed it. Maynard does it. And then he changes notes, and then he turns it into a vocal, like singing. Yeah. Like so, he does a scream, changes his notes within the scream, which is already difficult. Right. And then bring, keeps it going, and then puts it into just a smooth vocal line without stopping. That yeah. for me takes it to that one step higher. Okay. So okay. close, really good. Both of them absolutely fucking amazing. Yeah. I think given don't ever do that to me. Again. I apologize. <laughs> don't you given, ever do that. <laughs> given the right situation, I think it's a toss up for me because you know, like if you're just oh, really... you can't fucking play that shit. No, nah, man. <laughs> no, like no, you can't. You, you didn't tell us beforehand <laughs> that there was a, that we a could third just put a, There's a fucking you third can't option. C. There is Jesus no C. Christ, Nico. I am being attacked. <laughs> I am being attacked right now. I am being attacked. <laughs> Anyways, okay, back to this album. Um, You're scum. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you take like the first, no, okay, because I don't know. Wake doesn't really take the account because it's still it's just like a little bit of music, like an introduction to the album. Sure, yeah. right? It just starts off, kind of does a thing, and then it just leads right into giving yes. up. But if you take, oh, uh, at least the first five or six songs off of this album, yeah, back to back to back, everything is amazing. Okay, right, giving up. And to leave out all the rest, I think it does sour out a little bit on the e- eventually. Album. But I feel like if it does. you take okay, given up, leave out all the rest, bleed it out, shadow of the day, and what I've done. I don't all, think they scattered them well enough. Well, what I'm saying is, if you just take all of those songs like back to back to back to back yeah. all the, together, it's like a good like flow. Yeah, because you have like some good energy that leave out all the rest is kind of chill, but still has good momentum right. with it. Bleed it out is fucking catchy and strong we, as hell. Yeah. Leave out all the rest is amazing. Uh, yeah, I really like that. Song. Shadow of the day. I remember when I first heard that song. That legitimately was the first song. Oh, that's got the backwards guitar in it, doesn't it? The reverse in the very beginning. Yeah, yeah, the ver- yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I remember the very first time I heard that song. I even think I told you, but I said if there's ever a song that I wish I wrote myself, <laughs> it was Shadow Shadow of the Day because okay. like it was just so powerful, so beautiful, and like it had like the perfect like it mm-hmm. start off kind of bare and then the other instruments come in the drums yeah. and then the bass and it just has this huge epic ending it was yeah. just like fucking something we didn't even mention on this one this is the first one that they s- truly stepped away from the rap rock yeah and this one was also produced by Rick, Rick Rubin. oh uh, Rick aka Rubin. God yeah you mean <laughs> he even looks like God doesn't he so I, he's the one that was like let's not rap on this track and let's he would and he would say with, that yeah like, like he took him in this direction and I for me alright so this going back and think like research and Lincoln Park again I realized how much of music snobs we are <laughs> like do you really, think do, like, are, we, are we snobs no if you honestly think about it <laughs> like if an, an, a band comes out with a, a new album and you don't like the first single you might not listen to the damn album yeah snob so, isn't, that, isn't that fucked up, Nico? Yeah. You, what did you tell me? The first few seconds, you, when you hear a song, you know if you're gonna yeah, like yeah. it or not. That's, yeah, that's pretty much how I am. Well, yeah, okay. In, first in of all, reality, if you gave it time and you actually listened to the entire album, there's probably tracks on there that you're missing out on because they were really good and you would like them. Yeah, first yeah. of all, if you go to a Mexican restaurant with Nico, <laughs> um, this is all serious. Do it. Go this ahead. Is all serious. Okay. <laughs> He'll tell you. Whether we're gonna have a good meal or not, based on, on the, the, the quality of the salsa, yeah. so you that's already fact. know. It's fact. That's a fact. That's, not, that's a fact. That's the most subjective <laughs> bullshit I've ever heard in my that life. That's a fact. <laughs> and you, with this new diet, I can't eat salsa. I mean, it Damn. happens to be true. It's yeah. Not, it's it not, just happens. It's but not, it doesn't happen to be true. It's a fact. <laughs> yeah. 
Everybody it's knows a fact. this. If you go to a restaurant and their salsa is shit, just leave. walk the fuck out. Yeah. Walk the fuck out. Yeah, just tip Don't. your hat and say good day, sir. I'm yeah. out of here. You know, I say good day. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. It is the truth. But anyways, we're getting back to um, Lincoln Park. Lincoln Park. Um, one more song on it that I just want to mention that definitely was like the fuck yeah moment for me. No more sorrow, and how just yes. fucking brutal it was. Yeah, yeah. And heavy it was. Uh, for me, like I just I remember I listened to that song, and that da 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 you know that whole thing going on, it's just so aggressive and it's just so fun. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, to the point where you feel like Linkin Park is getting truly like heavier. Yeah. You know, like they have like a good energy and strength to them, but like them taking it up, just turning the the amps all the fucking yeah. way up and just like fuck it, like the breakdowns that this they have. This is the and, album that they push Brad to step it up. Yeah. Okay. That's like the, Brad, the, the guitarist. Yeah. That okay. like feels about the at the beginning of that song. It has yeah. that do do do. Like yeah. it all starts yeah, yeah. with the guitar. This is when they try to you know push it up. And some tracks on this album when they play live, he he fucks it up because he yes. put too much in it. Put 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 too much where he can only do it like right there when he's recording like, it. He's definitely a chord guy with a couple little yeah. leads and stuff, but. I like yeah. that kind of guitar. You know what I mean? That's like, called a rhythm guitarist. I I, I totally agree. <laughs> which is what I am. <laughs> we all we can all, we can all agree to that, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, real quick, back to to Rick Rubin. I think we saw something, and I don't know if it was for this album for a later album, but like he really isn't in the studio with them a whole lot whenever they do stuff, right? Like he kind of like just uh, gives them e- like emails, and like no, it depends on the artist. Um, well, like, I think in Park specifically, I remember seeing something where like they would send him a track, and then yeah. he would give like a long email of like what to do and what yeah. to take out and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I think when Lincoln Park and him came together, he knew that they had like he even I think he, if I remember right when, he, when I was watching an interview with him, he knew that they had the tools and he right. knew that they were capable yeah. of doing it on their own. He just sure. wanted to be the, he was just a guide. Yeah. And, and right. like they would send him a track and they'd be super happy about it. And then he'd send it back and be like, hey, and this is how the drop yeah. of the rap came. Like he sent one back and said, hey, look, try not to rap in this one. Yeah. Tr- this is such a good song. I what it song doesn't it was. need it. I can't remember exactly. Mm-hmm. I, but he was like, you don't need it. Mm-hmm. Just let's take that out and see what more you can do without it. It's probably shadow of the day. Impossible. I'm just, kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah, th- and that's that's what put them on this whole new path. And then, bam! They they now they have albums where there is no uh, no rap at all. Right, basically, right. it's just maybe sure. I haven't really on. heard much. Honestly, I I don't know what album it was, but I fucking heard Mike Shinoda actually singing. He sings from I want to say Hunting Party and on. I think I think it, it might have been before. Hunting Party. No, I want to say he starts in A Thousand Suns. Okay, okay. and then. He gradually does more and more and more. But Kay. even then, right now, in uh, Minutes to Midnight, he does backing vocals. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. He's always done some backing vocals, but he, he sure. steps it up more in this one. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of the backing vocals were rapping. and I mean, how it's how it's done yeah. originally, you know. Well, I'm talking but like if like, more singing. With this song, uh, with this album, there was more singing. So yeah. instead of him rapping, he did the harmonies. That's and fucking cool. With Chester. Even, uh, that's with, that's uh, great. Was it with uh, What I've Done? He does a la 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 la, yeah. la 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 like he does like little harmonies in the back. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Um, can I say something since we're talking about the the uh, producer? Um, in the previous album, I didn't say anything about um, on Meteora the video at least. They were talking about how um, what was his name? Uh, Dan Gilmore. Uh huh. Um, they were talking about how like he was such a good fucking producer in the first place that like. Um, he he really pushed them to do the best that they could because there were a lot of things that like they said we know that he could do you know or he knows that he could do a um re- you know record an amazing shitty song and it yeah. would sound great but he doesn't want that he wants to only record a badass good song you yeah. know what i mean and so he was actually picky with their lyrics the yeah. producer was mm-hmm. he would look at them and he'd be like uh can you you know i i get that you're making this point but uh i i need a little bit more shit to stand yeah. out you Rick know ruben did the same thing on uh, this album as well that's good i uh i remember, I imagine, I remember yeah. watching because you were talking about how they did the 
making of thing. Well, they also did it for this one too. Okay, I didn't. They did, it, they did it for a bunch of them after that. That's cool. And I watched every single one of them. And Shit. on this one, there was like they were all sitting around the console, and uh, Mike's sitting there with the notes. And he's like, uh, he says on this track we should change these words. Damn. Shit. How are we gonna do that? Like, and, I, and I've been there. And I've been yeah. there. And I know how much of a pain oh, in the used ass to it is. You all the time. You, yeah, yeah. But you know, I mean, it's just one of those things. You invest. Yeah. And the problem is that you invest, but at the same time, there's benefit to investing in it. You know, yeah. you're you're being able to know where you can go from that point when you do. Yeah. But you got to be able to to bite it. You got to be able to just kind of okay. Well, I. I have to scrap this, yeah. you know, even if it means more to you personally that not everybody else is going to understand. That's a part of it. You're not really making the music for you. No. Um, and so, um, that that's, that's just one that's, of the things. That's like something I tell Nico all the time. It's for the song. Yeah, exactly. If you're writing for the song, you can't, yeah. you can't go wrong. Yeah. Right. If I mean, it's got to come yourself, from somewhere. Yeah. If you're writing for yourself though, that's where you fuck up. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but no, and I, but I can only imagine I, even a, a a trained musician who's been in it who knows oh, what yeah. they're fucking it's doing. Really it sucks easy to slip into that though. Yeah, it, it exactly. Is. It sucks to have to sacrifice yeah. a piece of you. It is. It is a piece of you you're not allowing to move on. Yeah, into this foreverness that is music. Yeah, you know, and uh, it, it's got to be tough on them. But coming from coming from a, a sweet grizzly bear like Rick Rubin, like I think it's okay. Like if you ever you've seen Rick Rubin before, right? Oh yeah, he's a sexy beast. Just just a <laughs> just a little little old teddy bear, you know what I mean? And he does he does what I always consider to be like one of the best methods of producing, where he just like lays down oh, yeah. and just listens to the music. He does what a, a listener would do. He did that with Chili Peppers. Um, yeah, I, w- I was actually listening to a podcast with uh, um, Mike Shinoda mm-hmm. on it, uh, Tim Ferriss show. Um, and he was just kind of talking for a long time, but he was talking about how he's been developing um, transcendental meditation mm-hmm. that he learned from Rick Rubin. Yeah, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Rick Rubin is all about yeah. yoga and meditation. Yeah. Yo- yoga is like one of the best forms of work out there yeah. is. That's yeah. what I would like to learn. Yeah. But it's it, hard for you, me. Hey, hold on. Picture Johnny doing yoga. <laughs> now, picture Johnny. In yoga pants. Oh no! Dude, no, no, no. <laughs> hey, dude. Hey, dude. One one step closer to being able to suck my own cock. So, you know what? I got that on y'all. I don't, you know. Gary okay. won't have to do it anymore for nah. me. Ah. Ah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, where's my bat? Now, now I want to hear uh, you tell us the story of when you got to see them because oh, this is around God. this time period. Right? All right, so it was uh, I want to say second project project revolution tour, which. That in itself should have told people what to expect from Lincoln Park. Right. You don't know what to expect. Right, right, Because, right, right. I mean, you, I went to the show, and you go to other concerts, and you have similar bands, similar things. You, I went to Project Revolution, and there were so many different types of bands. Wasn't there, like, some street drum corps thing? There was that. There was, like, uh, you know... MSI. Yeah. There was I a love mindless self indulgence. <laughs> terrible band. You know, <laughs> but there was like all kinds. There was like a couple of just DJs that would go up and play and it was it was an event is what it was. It wasn't just a concert or a right. festival. it was an event. But Lincoln Park came out. This was in the Woodlands. Lincoln yeah. Park comes up and by this time you're already tired because it was a yeah. full day just constantly going. And they come up and they start playing I have never been inside the pavilion. I was on the lawn. Okay. I've never been in the pavilion. So packed. Like oh, wow. it was sold out, but you know motherfuckers got in there somehow because <laughs> there's no way that they were they were uh yeah. within capacity. Right. And it, cuz I'm sa- I'm I'm standing in the lawn and I'm a big guy. Right. They sold the tickets too cheap. Well, it's it's not that, but I'm an, I'm a big guy and the crowd starts jumping. I'm not physically jumping, but my body is going up and down in the air because I'm so squished within all these people yeah, yeah. that the whole group right, goes right. with you. And uh, it Best was time l- to fart ever. Oh, yeah. And it was hot. It was super hot. So that shit just would have simmered. But, but uh, it was amazing. It was beyond phenomenal. Like Starting off, I think it was the second half of the set, they had a huge curtain. And throughout the whole thing, they had these really big stairs. Right, and I, like it would use it and kind of go up and down or whatever. And there was epic lights, like just the whole thing visually, musically was uh, like amazing. 
but he, this dude's standing up on the top of the stair, Chester. Yeah, you yeah. see his silhouette, and then he starts singing the song, and he goes to the scream. He hits the scream on top of the steps. Like These are mm-hmm. huge steps. Hits the scream, jumps while screaming, goes through the air, lands at the bottom of the steps, doesn't miss a beat, keeps screaming. Yeah. And the, like he jumps with the curtain dropping, and he lands with the curtain on the Fuck. ground. And you're like, holy fucking shit. And he kept screaming the dude. whole way. I was like, man, this dude, he's he's a machine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was such a, it was a, it was an amazing experience. Do you remember what song this was? I do not. I was starstruck. Okay. But okay. like, uh. It was such an amazing, like, I would easily put it, like, top two, top top two for concerts ever. Yeah. But it I was so that. loud. It was so loud that Chester didn't even sing half of it. Like, he would try. He yeah. Would, and Chester can belt. He yeah. can let that shit go. You couldn't hear him. The oh, crowd wow. was so loud singing right. along with every single word of every single song. Like, they were blown away. So, after that... I want to say for like the next three or four years, they right. ended every single tour in the woodlands because it blew them away. Right. That tiny little venue outdid other European and other places with you know thousands and thousands of people. Yeah, Texas took them, dude. That's why they had a Texas <laughs> album. Oh yeah, they did a yeah. live. Well, live. Uh, I think that was before. Yeah. This I know. Time. Yeah, well, Show Han was born there. Where in Dallas? No fucking yes. Yeah. I thought it was Asian. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> um, Actually, I remember from whenever you were there, uh, I believe you called me during the drum solo during, yeah. um, what was it, Bleed It Out or... I think it was. Yeah, you, you called me during the drum solo. And this was at a time period where I think I just left. So oh, like, yeah. so you called me yeah. up and all I hear is this music and I was still like sour from like moving and yeah. like leaving music behind. And I remember you sent me that. And I was like, this is so fucking cool. Like, <laughs> this sounds amazing. Everything yeah. that I heard, because, like, I could hear him. And all I heard was you, he's doing a drum solo. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, okay, this is kind of fucking cool. Like, it, 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 like if, the, if the fire was really, really dim and low, hearing that was like, okay, just yeah. a little bit of gas. Yeah, you know that's I mean? cool, so man. It was really cool. I'm glad I said that. I honestly, I, like, I like, hope they do some of, like, that, the, the, the digital effects in the future uh-huh. for, like, a chester bennington you know what i mean like where it looks like he's on stage it's got the graphics yeah what do they just who, who's a the musician they do that for tupac tupac oh you're tupac. talking about the hologram the hologram shit fuck uh, yeah mm. because you can't really replace i wouldn't want it like Man, you my, my thing with lincoln park is if they can if they can do something if they can find someone that will almost be as equal or possibly even top Chester. That's the only reason they should go back. I don't think it'll But that's my saying that's what I'm saying. Like I think I, honestly I think the best thing they could do is they can just go into another uh um another direction. Well see that I don't know if they can. Like, well I mean I but maybe more rap based. I think they're uh, Or at least Mike Shinoda doing the vocals. That's what I feel. I Mike doesn't have that voice. He, well, he I don't did, think he uh, should well, do those songs. Well, they gotta have to. I don't know. That's where they're. We'll talk at. about that later. We still <laughs> yeah, got more we, shit we to talk about. Minutes to midnight. Yeah. Uh, oh no, I, I don't know. That's about all I had. Uh, was there <clears throat> any other songs on there that you wanted to? Um... I just felt like it was like all, it, like I felt like they they could have spread out the songs a little bit more. Because to me, it seems like there's nothing but like hits upon hits on, upon hits, and then like oh. the rest, I didn't even give a shit personally about. This is the one that sent them to the top. This is the one. This is the one. Okay. This you, is the do one. Do you think it was the the Transformer stuff that helped? It was. Them out? Okay. And the and the reason I say okay, so yeah, we were fans from the beginning, right? So right. that's right. one thing. Okay. Okay. But that it doesn't song, speak to the same generation. Well, there's that, but <clears> also at the top, you got to think about this. By this time, what year was this? 2007. Uh, seven. 2007. It was supposed to be 06, but they didn't get to recording yeah. it. In, in so this was almost later. a decade later, later right. from the first album. Sure. So you have you do have new listeners, obviously, but by being on that that movie, and I there was somebody that somebody else that I saw an interview with that said we were trying to get on that movie, and they were a big artist. Yeah, they were like we were trying to get on that movie, and we heard Lincoln Park got it. And when we and he's like, we knew right then, 
that's it. This is going to launch them. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. And it, in all honesty, it did. After that, yeah. No problem getting on movies. No problem doing whatever they want. Yeah. No problem. They, they had no problems. That sounds about There's right. There's nothing they could not do. There's it, you nothing know, honestly, they could not touch. Honestly, one of the only bands that came out the time that they did that were still kicking and thriving. Yeah. There's not many other bands. Like, even Limp Bizkit went fucking down for a great time, for yeah. a great while. I mean, and then you... You know, I love Deftones. I know you're, about, you're talking about Saturday Night Wrist, right? Well, no. Deftones, they kind of have done what I said in the beginning where they, they have their thing. Yeah, yeah. And they mm-hmm. do a great fucking right. job of yeah, it. Yeah. Right. And they keep their fans. Right. That's right. where they are. Mm-hmm. Right. But these guys took the risks. Yeah, yeah. To, and, and jumped up. And, and developed into and, a super being. Yeah, and now and then they became, like, right. untouchable. And at the same time, almost anybody from any part of rock can be like, I like Linkin Park because of this album. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, they touch so many fucking bases in what they do. I mean, it's not real real crazy the difference from album to album i don't think like i don't think it's like it's ridiculous yeah you know that they're changing sound but every album is different yeah very different yeah Yeah. and they focus on different things you know well you also gotta think no matter what they do they there was some tracks uh on not this album but the next not the next one yeah i think the next one that were just made no sense to me right but as long as you got Chester in there, you got you know somebody like that, or Chester and Mike in there, it's yeah. gonna it's gonna be Lincoln Park, right? Right. Period. Uh, do you want to go ahead and go to a thousand sons? I think I think so. We can okay. do that. Um, I guess this will be where I guess I can talk about. Well, uh, for me, this was probably the the moment where I kind of stepped away. From okay. Lincoln Park. Two thousand ten. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it was just sort of like I heard some songs and I was like. I don't know. Well, just here's do- the thing. Wait, I it, thought this was the album that you. Okay, this is a concept <laughs> album. Okay, so um, I don't really feel like it. It's supposed to fit in on the same tier level as all the other ones. I know, but I, I I didn't even know that, and okay. still I could be like, eh. Well, yeah, it, it was a concept album dealing with uh, human fears such as nuclear warfare. A thousand suns is Hindu Sanskrit scripture. That indicates that an atomic bomb is as bright as a thousand suns. Ooh. Yeah. You know what they did just before this one, right? No. They worked with Hans Zimmer. Oh, yeah, that's right. The, to do the uh, the second Transformers soundtrack. Oh, yeah, they, they got, did do they, that. Well, they, they got to do they did the whole... Right, the, right. Yeah, so they I got saw that work. in a video. I didn't write anything down. Yeah, yeah that for me was like, holy shit. Yeah. Han, I would Hans love Zimmer's, to work with Hans Zimmer. Yeah, he's pretty much... I mean, you could take a... like. Hans Zimmer's great. You could also take Danny Elfman if you're yeah, into that sort of thing. Yeah, hey, I, I, lo- hey, I love. Yeah, no, I love Danny. Elfman. You're giving him a hard on right now. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Hans Zimmer, he's like perfect for like epic scores. Yes. You know. Um, but okay, I guess knowing that it was concept album kind of gives it some yeah. sort of difference for me. But, um, like I said, this is where I stepped away from them, but. And I heard a song for specifically from this album, and I remember I told you like I'm not really feeling it. I don't yeah. really like it. It was one of their singles that they put out. Or yeah. They had a music video for it. Right. And then, not trying to go into it at all, but certain things were going on in life, and then I reheard the song. Yeah. yeah and I was sense. like, this is like the soundtrack to my whole entire life, or at least for what where where I'm at right now, and like it just it fits so perfectly with me, and it was just. I remember talking to you about it and I was like, remember that one song that I was shitting on? Yeah. I fucking love this song now. <laughs> That's crazy how uh, that shit works. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I guess I, I really would like that song to be my song and that song nice. is going to be uh, Waiting for the End. Play that shit. Wishing I had strength to stand 
This is not what I had planned. It's out of my control. So yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah, uh, like I was saying before, like it was so easy for me to like just sort of like be like nay towards it. Yeah, yeah, the, it. yeah you're but a the, horse. Yeah, you know, that's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect, but still, I hate you for saying that. <laughs> um, but finding something to really like put that music to within my life, it was like it fits so perfect. I was like, I that was one of those songs that was always on repeat. Yeah, I was always just like attaching so much to those words and the way that he was singing it that it was just yeah. like unbelievable you know yeah. yeah I truly love that song it seemed pretty uh, uplifting I, I I guess the music might have been I don't know so much about the lyrics I mean yeah. it was talking about like starting over okay. and like letting go of everything which that's kind of a 50-50 how you want to take it as positive or like kind of sad right because I mean letting go of everything that you you're holding on to for so long could be yeah. so depressing but step lear- le- learning to let go and starting yeah. over is like the most yeah powerful thing you can do in my opinion it's also one of the scariest things. oh yeah yeah and, oh, right. uh, yeah. where i was in life that was it was just okay. the, the great unknown for me but yeah that that song and where were you uh this is when i was leaving this is when i left huntsville oh uh, yeah so, so the this was, a, was falling apart yeah, yeah, yeah every, i mean right. we lost you and nick and then you yeah. know everything was just sort of like you, you were losing everything that you were holding on to and yeah. all you knew was like yeah so you had to let go of that and right. start over. So that's really where I was at with that. So, um, okay. on that video though, yeah, please, Joe Han, that was amazing. Like he did that's that. An, that's, yeah, dude. I mean, if you he did all Shit. he did all of them. There's I think there's only like one or two that yeah. he had somebody with him. Other yeah. than that, he does all their music videos. That's fucking crazy. And it, you're looking at that music music video. Nobody has done that. Nobody did. I've that. I've never seen that before. Yeah. And I mean, it was cool. So to think that this guy, he comes out with stuff that nobody thinks of, and he's a DJ for a rock band. Yeah. What yeah. the hell? He's turning more <laughs> into a visionary, man. Like, yeah. Yeah. It's good that and, a lot of them for, took the art school skills. Yeah. But for me, it's like, it sucks because he's so underrated. Yeah. Yeah. But true. at the same time, like, they are multi platinum selling. They're like, multi platinum. Yeah, they are. But him as a visual right, arts okay. person okay. to create yeah, videos yeah. like that, you would think somebody would have said, hey, this guy, every time he does something, it's it, yeah. it takes it up to a level that nobody's done before. Let's yeah. let's get with him and do a movie. Let's Fuck get with yeah. it. I mean, they, they've, they've, he's done a short movie that he did with the band and things like that. That's cool. But. As far as like an actual full, somebody needs to say, "Oh, let's pick him up and yeah. see yeah. what the fuck we can do with him." Yeah, but till then, at least an anime or something. Yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. Anyway, um, but honestly, with this album, and maybe there's, I mean, Blackout was okay, but oh, dude, Blackout. Whenever I I heard this song, all I could think was Johnny would love this song. It is right up your alley. Like I'm talking right up your poop chute, <laughs> into your ears. That's where it is, hitting the uh, the prostate. It it, it it massaged it. If it massages my up. prostate, I'll listen to it. <laughs> it, it is. It, it it has your style of like electronic kind of thing, and then I the, the can't screaming believe. distorted. See, this is. I should have had extra notes. Somebody <laughs> should have called me distorted, up and told me it had the distorted, compressed vocals, like like right. fast paced. I mean. It, it's your song like that would be your Linkin Park song okay I I'm gonna like I'm gonna give it a shot I haven't to. I everything I mean I mean I'd hate to say that I didn't listen to all the songs but I didn't like what I was hearing on this album um the only one that really brought any of my attention that I did click on was the catalyst I do love the catalyst. I didn't <laughs> like it until I listened to the end of the song <laughs> and the end of the song I felt was fucking you know yeah. Bring me up, let me go. Yeah. Like, that shit, that was pretty... Uh, it was something. For me, the s- most of the songs, like, actually... Because there was a lot of stuff on here that was just... Yeah. What is that? Yeah, that was something dorm, dorm. Yeah. Yeah. Most of it, for me, was just noise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah, it was... It, like, and you said concept. Like, it, it's... Yeah. And I get yeah. that, but... Yeah. There's song songs. Yeah. I loved them. 
Okay, okay. Like I, I wasn't, I wasn't disappointed by their actual singles and songs out there. Is this the one where, like, on the album, like all the the songs are in capitalized? No, that's uh, Living Things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. I said everything I know about a thousand suns. Okay. Uh, so Living Things was after that. Yes. Okay. Um, going into Living Things, uh, I remember going back to this album like I remember hearing Burn It Down and thinking this is a great song and a lot of their songs are really great Um, then taking time away from it and then coming back to it I remember this was the one that I was legit excited to go back to Uh, just because like the overall energy of every single song yeah it's just so like it's the perfect song the perfect album just go for a run you know what I mean like just taking a jog and listen to these songs like it'll get you fucking going Lost in the Echo Mm mm-hmm it's fucking solid. Um, Burn it down, obviously. Um, it, it's pretty fucking solid. I remember I was listening to that. Song. I like Castle of Glass. Castle of yeah. Glass. Do you, uh, the vocals on that? They were inspired by Bob Dylan. Very interesting. Wow. That's why it kind of has a folky vocal sound. Right. That's so like a uh, stuck in the middle with you was inspired by uh, Bob Dylan. Mm-hmm. You know. It'd be inter- it, that's a very interesting thing. I mean, Chester. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's that, that, that folk style. That Crawling in my skin. <laughs> <laughs> Wounds that will not heal. Heal. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, uh, this is another one where there was, there was a good chunk of them to me that were noise, but there was a lot of songs on this that I actually really enjoyed. It had a good energy to it where like you felt sort of like a similar feeling from song to song to song just like with the electronic stuff that was going on. Yeah. Um I don't know, I feel like listening to songs back to back is just you felt the same Right. Like it didn't really go up or down or you just sort of felt the same energy going throughout this. I'll be honest at this point like Burn It Down's the only one I heard um and then all the others I have never listened to in, until doing this showcase. Oh, okay, so I, I listened to all of them, but uh, this was also their most personal album. Okay, I know that it was a, a combination of um, their past, their previous four albums together. Like yeah. they're trying to draw inspiration from like everything they've done before, and really try to hit one that was close to home. Yeah, this this whole thing was just uh, they tried to make it as personal as possible. Yeah. So in that sense, I appreciated it more. For, yeah, 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 for, for sure. sure. Yeah, Even absolutely. if it was a shitty album, that alone, the concept of doing something for you. I mean, they've yeah. done everything else for everybody else. See, one thing with Linkin Park, though, if, if you go into it, listen to it, and you and you focus especially on the lyrics, yeah, they're going to have something on their album that, that reaches you, period. Oh, yeah. Wow. At point in case Every with me. Album. Fucking yeah. Wait until the end. And if, if you are a music snob, hey, you won't hear it. Until you go back and listen to it, and you're like, See, "Oh shit, that's what th- it this is." This song gets me. Well, I don't like this because it's all capitalized. <laughs> <laughs> it seems it sounds like, like it's you're ye- yelling. It's at like me. it's yelling at me. Yeah. And <laughs> I've got a friend on Facebook that every post they have is always in all caps, and I'm like, "Stop yelling at a, me! You need to tone it down, man." Being a little too aggressive. <laughs> too aggressive. Too, too aggressive. You gotta, you gotta chill. Yeah. No, I, I actually enjoyed a good chunk of this album. Yeah. Good energy, I would yeah. say. Yeah. Um, are you ready to move on? Uh, yeah. They were doing some stuff after that, like some uh, stuff with Steve Aoki, oh, like yeah, yeah. some remixes and stuff okay. like that. Oh, they did the LP is he, recharge. Is he like a um, uh, dubstep kind of guy? Yeah. Oh, the Steve Aoki. Yeah. He, yeah. He's a he's a DJ too. Yeah. He's actually right. the son of the guy who owns Benihana. Nice. How about that? That's pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, I love a Benihana. I love a Benihana. Well, his dad owns that, and he did all of this without his dad. I've never been to a Benihana. (laughs) Yeah, I I watched. I watched the Steve Aoki story just to kind of see it, and I was impressed. Like the dude, he comes from money, but he didn't use daddy's money. Is he? Is he the guy that looks like Stephen Carpenter? He looks like Jesus. He looks like Asian Jesus. Yeah, that's what Stephen Carpenter looks like. Oh. <laughs> this dude looks like Asian Jesus. <laughs> how can you say that Stephen Carpenter looks like Jesus? He doesn't look like Jesus. I don't see he how looks he looks like looks an Asian. Like... No, he doesn't. Jesus. He doesn't look even close. No. If, if 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 Asian Jesus First was of a all, beast, you don't know what Jesus looks like. Hey, you asked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so yeah, no, they were they were doing some stuff with him at this point. Um, I think it was a good combination of styles. Oh yeah, dude, I, I liked it. I actually wa- uh, I also watched the where they were making it and watching Mike kind of like, all right, so how 
this is how we're going to put some Lincoln Park in it. But then at the same time, we got to have that Steve Aoki. Or, right. And they're, like, they're, they're collaborating with the music. And then you, I was, you hear, this is something that I don't think enough bands do. Let, let, let people see the evolution of what you're doing. Right. So you hear the song and uh, the music and you're like, okay, that sounds like it does. Right. But it doesn't. And then he brings Chester in and they did this at his home. And uh, Chester's in there and he's doing his, his screams and his singing and stuff. And you're watching how they do the vocals and all that fun stuff. Yeah. And then you hear it start coming together and then you see them. It's funny because you'll see them like he's up there screaming and singing. And then the next take you see him and Chester's just like lounging in the chair with his legs crossed. And he's got his little pin and pad. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, well, what about what about this word? Eh, it's, it's just like what we used to do. When right. We sit there like, well, what about this word? Yeah. That's, I don't think that works. And it was the same thing. So for anybody who's in a band and watches that, it's like, OK, we're doing the same thing these guys are doing. Tell you what, the Internet. As a uh, rhyming dictionary? Yeah, they. I, I think at one point you <laughs> see them use something like that, and they're like, ah, that word sucks. So no, we're not going to do that. But it was cool watching them do that, and I actually really did like that song. It's really high energy. Yeah. I just want to point out. Uh, I that think they use it a lot for soccer and stuff. That makes sense. Yeah. just wanted to point out that uh, that Borange is a last name of somebody. So that works in case you're ever in the predicament of needing to rhyme a word with orange. <laughs> Anyways, um, I want to get to Hunting Party because I fucking really enjoyed Hunting Party. It was a lot better than I was imagining it would be. You know, I considered it uh, a rock album. It sure as fuck is. And well, uh, on top of that, they went back to their uh, hybrid elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They wanted to re examine like kind of check out what they missed and yeah. like redo that so okay so uh the uh interview that i listened to uh with uh mike shinoda they were in the process of uh the hunting party and recording that so uh um he w i know that he was talking about what he he's been jamming mm -hmm. like if he was on our show what you jamming mike what you jamming yeah he would have been able to say things like uh well, I've been listening to you know heavier rock here yeah. lately, and mm -hmm. that's kind of inspired me to you know on this new album. So. Uh, I will say that uh, when they had uh, Paige Hamilton from Helmet, I was like, okay, oh yes, yeah. fucking cool. Thank I you for doing that. I remember showing you the video where he came in. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that all for nothing? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, they have uh, Darren Malachi, Malachian, Malachi. He came from uh, uh, from, from System, System of Down. Down. Oh shit. When I first heard that song, I legitimately thought I was listening to a system song yeah. for a little bit just because no of how like, aggressive it was. Um, I want to give high praise to their fucking drummer in this album because yeah. he yes. turned it all the fucking way up for this one. Okay. He went to 11. Uh, <laughs> yeah. As far as I'm concerned, War, the yeah. song War, they went full punk rock for that right. shit, and it was so fucking fun. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, uh, and then uh, rebellion with uh, Darren from System of a Down. Cool, you know, Lincoln Park and System of a Down. Like that's exactly what you heard. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like both styles clashing together to create something really fun, really aggressive, really heavy. Um, and then fucking Tom Morello joins in. Yeah. Uh, fucking, you heard him come in the whole. You knew like I, I was listening to. Was like, all right, when's he gonna come in with the woo? You know, like some weird thing. But when he came in, it's like, <laughs> there's my boy Tom Morello. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, uh. <laughs> Just some real heavy fucking like rhythms and riffs and drums, like aggressive fucking album. Yeah, yeah. I, I like that album. It, this album, out of all their albums, would probably, I'd probably put it like three. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't say maybe yeah. nothing as, uh, uh, I don't want, I mean, I guess poppy or like, you know, as like, you know, catchy as some of their other songs or yeah. albums. But just if you're looking to get aggressive with your boys. Yeah. This is the one. Yeah. For sure. <coughs> You're the boys that I like to get aggressive with, you know, jamming some good stuff. Yeah. Now, this is also yeah. when Chester broke his ankle. Oh, damn. They did three shows for this tour, and then he broke his ankle, and they had to cancel the tour. Damn. That sucks, man. Another time where Chester fucks it up for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like, fucking he couldn't Chester. do a fucking Dave Grohl and just cast his fucking leg up and still. It was it was so fucked up. Like uh, they it showed there again they did a making of this one. So right, right. It, like it was so swollen. There's no way. Like he was cru cruising around on his uh, on a wheelchair. I mean, there's there were times where they brought in other guys to play bass. There was times they brought other in other guys to play guitar mm -hmm. for uh, for the uh, when Brad had a ba his back got messed up. Mm -hmm. um, but you can't replace Chester. That's true. Especially, like, at the beginning of a tour. Yeah. It's not going to happen. 
So, and that that's another thing they're going through right now. For sure. Like, um, but before we get to that, yeah. um, all I could really say about Hunting Party, and also what was kind of cool about this album is they did another album that was full of acapellas and instrumentals, Yeah, which is really interesting for them to oh, do. Yeah. Uh, especially with it, how like hardcore, like brutal it was. Right. Uh, I don't know. I just thought that was like a fun thing that they were able to do. Especially considering acapellas and instrumentals are complete opposites. Sure. Yeah. So that's cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, do you want to get so one more light? Is there anything on this one that you want to talk about? Okay, so one more light. Oh. Uh, Hunting party was also produced by Brad and Mike. Nice. This is the one that they did so together. The Lincoln Park. Yes, this produced. was a full-on Lincoln Park album. Man, that's fucking cool. That's cool. Yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, I respect that. Okay, so after this one, they went into their most recent album, One More Light. Um, so I, it sounded like a cry for help. Just the the the, the titles of all the songs. Mm-hmm. You read them back to back. It's. It sounds like... I mean, I've never heard anybody talk about it, but just reading that, it sounds like a cry for help, for sure. I agree. Um, but what I, would... How would you how would you describe this album? Me? Yeah. In all honesty, like, listening to it, I listened... I went back and listened to this like nothing had ever happened. Mm-hmm. Right. And I think... I, like, I don't see this album as a cry for help. Okay. I don't... Okay. Look, it, with what happened and going back and mm-hmm. thinking about that, yeah, you could see that. You can but see that, yeah. you could go back to half his other albums and say the oh, same thing. Oh, for sure, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's especially not that. the beginning stages. Yeah, 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 it's not that. I feel like this what they did with this album. This album is a bridge. Okay. Okay, and a lot of people didn't get it, and I didn't get it the first time. Remember, I first showed you one of the songs. I was yeah. like, "What the hell are they doing?" Uh, it was heavy. I was a music snob. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. you, what they did with this album, is genius. Okay, right. people don't get this. the The people out nowadays, the kids out nowadays, they don't know Lincoln Park, or if they do, they don't get it. Right. Most of them don't even know it, and and they did one of those little YouTube videos where oh, Mike were, watched these kids listen yeah. to Lincoln Park. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. they didn't know who the hell he was. They didn't know. Right. They didn't know what there was. And some it of them did. Way different. Some of them did. Well, no, they were showing them all different kinds of Lincoln oh, Park okay, songs. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of them didn't know anything. They were like, uh, "Why is he so angry?" and all that stuff. Oh, right. But, right. Uh, this this album, it this goes t- straight to the kids who are listening to pop and and stuff yeah. like that right now. So with this album, for us, yeah, we were like, "What the fuck are you doing?" Mm-hmm. Yeah. But now there's millions of these younger people who yeah. are into More the into girl it, yeah. that sang with he- uh, on heavy, uh, which was oh, also right. written by Julia Michaels, one of the biggest pop singers out right now. Oh, wow. So you have these types of songs that aren't what we're used to for sure. Mm-hmm. But right. now all these f- millions of people that are into that type of music yeah. are going to be like, ooh, I like this. And, and and then what do you do whenever you find an ar- a band or an artist that you like? Find you, other artists like it. You do, but you also go back and listen to what else they oh, do. Oh, yeah, they're, they're old stuff. So how many people, subscribe, so to speak. How many younger people that have never really got uh, introduced to Linkin Park after this would have been introduced to old Linkin Park? Right. Taking their fan yeah. base like this would have taken their fan base and my, they would have lost a lot and they yeah. did, but after this it would have grown exponentially. Mm-hmm. Like Absolutely. it would have been ridiculous. That's what I see this one with. Yeah, uh, listening to the whole thing. I mean, I remember you showed me heavy, and I think I listened to like the first five seconds yeah. of it, and I was like, nope. nope. Okay. I legitimately turned it off. I, yeah. didn't, I didn't really care for that song. But to be but but I listened to it again. Did yeah. you watch the video? No, I did not. The video makes the song. Okay, okay. Uh, listening to the other songs before Heavy to get like an overall feeling of the album as a whole. And by the time we, I got to Heavy, I felt more comfortable walking into it and listening to what was going on because my ears were a little bit more comfortable with what he was doing. Like going straight from their older stuff into Heavy. Yeah. It was like, whoa, whoa what? What, yeah, the what the fuck the hell is going on? Happened? But. Going from you know nobody can save me and good goodbye you know yeah, like yeah. getting a getting a feel like, you know walking into it a little yeah. bit easier I, I was able to respect a little bit more and then whenever the 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 female singer came in uh, honestly you know it, it reminded me a lot yeah like a lot of like the pop music that we're hearing nowadays yeah that's what it is and yeah. I remember you, I don't know if it was you or somebody else that was saying that they were coming up with this stuff like years before yeah. what was coming out now would hit big. Yeah. That was so a, everyone, had, everybody was saying that. that you're copying. It's like, no, we came up with this shit before the other right. stuff came out big. They and were writing the album 
a year before this stuff started coming out. Yeah. And then this stuff comes out, and they were ahead of the game. Yeah. And, and you know, they also did something completely different on this album that they haven't done before. What's that? Started with the lyrics first. Yeah. Before they did the music. They and started the with same, the story and the at lyrics. At the same time, that could have been a breaking point for a certain person. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. hard to do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one song that really particularly hit me, um, uh, Sharp Edges. That was good. Yeah. Um, that one was really good, and that was particularly poppy and yeah. what you'd expect to hear on, like, the buzz. You know what I mean? Like, in, in that sort Ooh, of... Speaking of the buzz. Uh, Go ahead. But in that specific, <laughs> um, that sort of indie feel that yeah. we're getting out yeah. of music nowadays, I feel like Sharp Edges is, uh, well well written the song itself the story itself is pretty amazing um but it's kind of got like that bubbly sort of mm-hmm. indie beat or yeah. you know the music musical aspect to it that um is a little different um agreed yeah um, i find it funny whenever you you message or call me to, to do this podcast because that day <laughs> i was listening to the buzz and they were talking about rod ryan was talking about he wanted the newest single. I think it's talking to myself. I want to say it's either there or nobody can save me. That's the newest single okay. that's, out, that's out. And he was saying that it should be on the buzz. They didn't agree that heavy should be on the buzz, so it didn't get right on the buzz. Sure. But he was saying that that one should be. And, and in all honesty, if you listen to the song and you put Jacoby from Papa Roach on it, yeah, it's a it's a it's a Papa Roach song. Hmm. Oh wow! Straight up, it is. But which one? Uh, I want to say it's talking to myself. Okay. Okay. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I was, but I was listening to it, and and like there's a there's what they call a music wizard, and he kind of decides what songs are going right. to be played and things like that, and uh, like they were going, he was going off on it. He's like, this song should be played, yeah, it should be played on the buzz, and this and that, and like they were taking callers and stuff. And I was trying to call in, yeah. I was, like I was trying to get there. I was like, let me in, and they I couldn't get in. So after that, I was like, you know what, fuck it. I don't ever email. I don't ever do anything. So. I typed up this big email of why it should be on the buzz and I sent it in. And right about that time, the wizard comes in and they're talking to him about it and they're talking about how he chooses songs and all this stuff. And he's like, you know what? This will help you decide. He read my email. Fuck out of no here. Way. He read my no email, dude. Way. I was like, yes. Did you save that for the show? No, did I? Well, uh, no, the story? No, yeah, of course. Oh, man. <laughs> but I was sitting there, I was like, He's reading my email. He's like, he said, Gary from uh, Huntsville, Texas, he says this. And he goes through my email. He's like, this guy understands music. I was like, fuck oh yes. I was, I was driving around my dish van like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> motherfuckers. Holy uh, shit. You turn into fucking Leo from Titanic. I'm the king of the yeah. world. But yeah, and then like that happened and we're t- like the holding apart thing. And I'm sitting there, you know, defending these guys already. And then right. you call me and you're like, hey, you want to do Link Park? I'm so, fuck yeah, dude. He literally I'm said, punk. fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that I just thought that was cool, like you said, ninety four five. But yeah, yeah. oh, it's a fucking great story. Because they didn't agree. Nobody on the on the buzz agreed that that should be on the right. buzz. Oh wow! And Rod Ryan was the only one saying yes. And then they took callers, and the day before, that everybody said no. And then the, they played it one more time. Music snobs yeah. played it one more si- time, and then everybody said yes. Wow! So it, people in this world nowadays judge too quickly. Sure. Period on sure. everything. And it's not just the music snobs. It's everything. You know. Now. Yeah. Yeah. You, they look at one picture and they think they sure. know what happened. It's not fair. It's it's. And we bad. do it. We yeah. all do it. Oh, We're yeah. a part of it. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. But it's just not fair. Yeah. You know. It's it's. I want to say short minded thinking. I want to say that this album to me, uh, I could hear a lot in Chester's vocals. Uh, there was a sense of rawness to it, yeah. like. Um, the it was the soft songs, and I heard it a lot, like in like one more light, um, something that sounded like um, it was it was felt like it wasn't pushed so hard, and you could actually hear him for who he was, you know, how, hear his real voice, you know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, I don't know, I mean, it sounded raw, but at the same time produced well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, it it just like particularly like the flickers flickers yeah like there's something about that that makes you feel vulnerable to the way that he's singing and talking it it's, makes you feel like he's being vulnerable to the rest of the world it's he the, was yeah it's the one thing that sure you, you can call me a music music snob all you want but it's <laughs> right. it's it's the thing that i 
attract to the most with a song that makes me know like I'm truly gonna love this song and it's the tone yeah it's the character the it's vulnerability what, exactly it's what you feel it's why I love Chance Rapper so much you right. feel you hear him well, coming out in one second it's, you hear him you hear it in his voice you hear the tone yeah. the character that's being put out into the song you felt that with Chester yeah. I, I feel what you're saying with One More Light and I feel like right. we're gonna talk about that a lot we in will, a second yeah. um, but it's just something that just sucks you in you can appreciate yeah. it for being a beautiful song but there's just that one tiny little bit of it with the tone and the character that sucks you in mm-hmm. and just I can tell you ahead, what it is I can tell you what it is and it's the same thing that I like in any rap that I happen to listen to it's probably the same thing with Chance the Rapper Okay, it's honesty true yeah that's what it is. It's you can tell when somebody's being honest. You can tell when somebody's being full of shit. That's why we don't like Fred Durst. <laughs> am I? I mean, am I right or am yeah, I wrong? It's it's about that vulnerability and about that honesty. You know where they're coming from. You know that you could tell whether somebody's doing it for a record company or they're doing it for the fans, which yeah. is a different group to to um, satisfy. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think I think that that's what it is. Well, you know, this one was done through Warner Brothers and Machine Shop, which yeah. is Mike's label. Oh, cool. okay. I yeah. I saw that on the Wikipedia because that's where I do most of my shit. And oh. and <laughs> I didn't know what that was though. Machine yeah. Shop is his label that he created. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's good. He should have. You see what I'm saying? That. When did yeah. he get time to paint? Yeah. When <laughs> when the <laughs> did he get time? He's got labels. Yeah. He's got <laughs> so um. Is it that time to talk about the big thing? There's there's the big thing, but we'll talk about the thing that goes into it. We'll talk about one more life. Okay, yeah, sure. See um, so uh, Chris Cornell passed away. Yeah, Chris Cornell um, was was it Chester's godfather or parent? Chester was Chester his, was his Chester kid's was godfather his yeah, kid's yeah. godfather. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So they're fucked. In order for that to be your title, they're br- to they're somebody. Brothers. Yeah, they had to be. you have to be really close. Yeah, yeah, sure. uh, both amazing, not just musicians, not just amazing, famous musicians, skilled. Yeah. Okay, the notes that both of those guys can play are sing are are, ama- like top shelf. They were aliens, man. There's no human <laughs> way it's you insane. could have done anything like that shit. It's bit like Chris Cornell. Oh my fucking god. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So. Uh, Somebody real close to him, he dedicated uh, this song. I don't know if he wrote it about him or not. I don't one, know. One more, li- one more light? One more light. It had already come out. Yeah. Before it had already come out. Yeah. Okay. Actually, uh, he talked to Chris Cornell about these songs. Chester was nervous about this album. Okay. Like He talked to Corey Taylor. Mm-hmm. He uh-huh. talked to all different kinds of artists. Oh, let wow. them listen to it. And they told him, like a lot of them were like, this is different, but go for it. Yeah. And he, they did. Yeah. And it he didn't like the response yeah so I mean, he made it known and then he apologized when he did that rant on Twitter. Yeah. yeah if you like if you want hybrid theory you can listen to that out that was 10 years ago yeah. but we're not going to do that anymore you know yeah um but back to one more light the song yeah um yeah we heard that song yeah. uh and it, it, we had heard it after Chris. we had heard it whenever it was dedicated it was on the jimmy kimmel yeah, show yeah. it was dedicated to one of the clo- one of his closest brothers, which happened yeah. to be Chris Cornell, which yeah. we all know from Soundgarden and Audio Slave, yeah. and Temple of the Dog, and, and probably solo something else. albums, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing, brilliant singer. Um, we heard that dedicated to him, and um, uh, okay, well, backstory about mm-hmm. me. Um, mm-hmm. I had my son. The reason why we weren't doing the show for two months is because I had my son, and uh, I just spend all the time in the world with him. You know, uh, if I've got time with them, there's nothing else more important than me spending time with them. Yeah. I don't get them very often, and he's been living over 200 miles away. Yeah. Which he just moved to Gal- Galveston, so this is awesome. But <laughs> at this point in time in the story, um, I did not, that wasn't a part of what was going on. So um, I had just uh, relinquished him back to his mother, you know, which I'm sure she missed the fuck out of him. I totally get that, you yeah. know. But um, not being able you know to have them quite as often um it 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 really it was the day of whenever chester bennington killed himself and then nico uh showed me this song um one more light this was just after i relinquished 
you know, yeah. my child. And um, so I was already holding it in, you know, because yeah. every, every time that, you know, I give him back up to his mom, I, I fucking, I can't take it emotionally. It's really hard for me. I'm so blessed, hashtag blessed, to have, uh, <laughs> to have uh, a family like uh, Christy and Nico um, to live with me and, yeah. you know. Uh, help me with my shit. So Chester just passes away, and I, <laughs> I, uh, it it hit me listening to that song uh, pretty hard, and uh, yeah, I fucking bawled my fucking eyes out. I think specifically that performance. Specifically, I mean, that if you t- if you break it all down, like he's dressed in all black. Yeah. yeah. First off, everybody's dressed in all black. Yeah. Um, the, just the the overall energy was really like low, somber, somber. Yeah. Yeah. And then. It got to a point in the song, right? I, I'm sure I could speak for everybody yeah. in this one, mm-hmm. where he just lets out this roar, yes. unlike anything I've ever heard before. Mm-hmm. And if you, li- it wasn't on the album. It wasn't it was, on I, the I, album. Was, no. I mean, kind of in a way, he does something, but he does nothing unlike. I mean, he doesn't do anything like that. Correct. Uh, and when he did it, it was just sort of like, it was like the final coffin. I mean, it's the final nail in the coffin. Yeah. It was just like, damn, yeah. like this is real. Yeah. Like this is. He's he's not here anymore, and yeah. this is all the evidence to what was really going on in his head. I'm and already it, sensitive to music. Yeah, you know what I mean. Certain songs, like real things, don't mm-hmm. really get me that much. For real, mm-hmm. like I've I've had you know, I've had grandparents pass away, and I grieve. I do, but I get headaches instead of crying. Mm-hmm. Music, on the other hand, it it could be just a song. It could be a happy sad song. <laughs> It could be the cure, and I'm bawling my eyes out for no fucking reason, and yeah. I, I realize how ridiculous it is. But this fucking hit me in every fucking direction, yeah. Yeah. and in every way, and I just I I, it was a good thing because I needed to do it. I needed to get it out, you know. But I don't like I don't like little cry you know what i mean like i ugly I, cry I, was, I, I was ugly cry like a bitch <laughs> I, I was two feet away from him and he it was the nastiest cry I've ever it was seen. a nasty cry but in Beard a way i snotted up i 100 oh, percent understood it completely yeah so yeah. there was no judgment if anything yeah. i felt bad that i showed it to you because i wasn't expecting you to react like that no but i love that yeah yeah, yeah. i love i love feeling feeling like i so i like being able to cry because i can't do it all the time i can't do it the times when i need to mm. you know what i mean so whenever i do it is rare far and few between i but don't remember the last time i cried shit well you need to i, I just don't. oh well we're gonna watch some fucking chick flicks <laughs> <we're in. laughs> yeah. no when i when i first heard uh about chester i was i was i was pissed yeah like I wasn't not because well, of the what it was, but I was right. pissed because I was in New York. Yeah, and it was an escape. Right. Yeah. So and we were in a place where there was like no signal. Yeah. So I was, I was taking that opportunity of, I'm not gonna text nobody. I'm yeah. not gonna message nobody. I'm not gonna call nobody. Like this is me taking some time and yeah. just getting the fuck away. And now you're by yourself, huh? So to speak. I mean, like you're you're. Now, whenever something so fucking depressing happens, like Chester's death, yeah. you're like, "Well, I was I was up there, and uh, I go, to, I wake up, I go to breakfast, yeah. and I'm sitting there like enjoying the fuck out of myself because right. it was so beautiful. Sure. Everything up there was beautiful. Everything was green. It's New York, and then well, it was north, uh, upstate New York. So oh, nice. It, was, it nice. was super green, really nice. There was a creek that ran right by the, the house, it but was, it wasn't fucking humid. No, it wasn't. And yeah. then on top of that, it was so far up north, like just past the river, there was no poisonous snakes, no fire ants, no Shit. ants. Sounds I, I like could, the life, man. Yeah, I could lay on the ground and not get bit by anything. But oh anyway, either way, either way yeah. I was up there, and uh, Amy decides to tell me, hey, by the way, Chester died. He hung himself. Just like that. Wow. And I was like, wait, what? Chester from Lincoln Park hung himself. He's dead. I'm like, uh, okay. So I, um, I got up I'll and be, I walked outside and I went by the creek and I just stood there for like two hours. Really? It hit me. See, not a, a you know, and, and God bless her. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> some people, some people don't understand. Oh, she didn't. She didn't understand at all. Right. Like, because it, it, I mean, it's a famous person. Some people don't understand that connection that, you know, 
some of us can have to certain famous people. Yeah. It doesn't matter if they knew who we were. Yeah. It matter they still did something to our lives. They connected in some way. Whether Absolutely. they know it or not. They don't have to. Or they, for me they help they even helped me with a lot of things, but yeah, they also in the same way helped me progress as a musician. It's kinda they, like deism. We won't go into that. Yeah. They were they were they were they were the voice. They were the words that you needed to hear. They yeah. were the comfort that you needed when you felt all alone. Yeah. They were they were everything, you know. And yeah. And I wanted to ask you this. Uh, you're kind of touching on it, but like, whenever like uh, a, a musician passes away. Like mm-hmm. Prince, whenever Prince passed away, yeah. like I legitimately had to hug someone because I was yeah. just so upset by it. When David Bowie passed away, that one I was me. I was really inconsolable about it. When yeah. Lemmy died, I was like, that was like one of the godfathers of sure. metal. It was like, what are we without our you know these these yeah. people? You know, Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell, absolutely. You know, that one hit me a little um, harder. None Chester, of, hit none me of harder. those except for Chris Cornell affected me. I yeah. know, but, but, but me but, either. But I could get it. Yeah. I get why. I I could always yeah. understand. Robin Williams was honestly the first one for me. <laughs> yeah, that pissed me off. Yeah, but there, there, there. there obviously, there, there are people, artists, musicians, actors, whatever you want to say it, who, who leave that, that, that imprint, print, imprint on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, like, for people who don't get that, yeah, and that's totally fine. Yeah, you know? I mean, because they're, they're, sure. if if something happens like that, good on them. They're they're yeah. gonna say, well, you know, they they chose they chose to do that, or you know, like they yeah. should have known well, what they were, yeah. wa- you know, like Especially they're they're gonna suicide. they're gonna get they're gonna get a little ugly with it, what you know. Specifically on the ugliness of it, you know, and we're talking about suicide. There's a lot of people that had a big fucking problem with it on the internet, and they were pissed off about it. Yeah. Uh, not the same way we're pissed off, but more so the fact that. Somebody left their six kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I get that too. Yeah. But you don't know what somebody goes through. If you if you kill yourself, you know what I mean? And you have six kids, you know, that are your world, you've got to be going through too much shit that you can't handle it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we can't grasp that. Yeah. And we also don't experience what's going on on the situation. Yeah, that's what uh, I was watching when Seth Seth Rogen mm-hmm. uh, react to yeah. finding out about that. And he said something yeah. similar. Like he even said yeah. um, to be in a band that he was in, to have yeah. those many that many kids, to right. have all this success yeah. and still be that depressed. There is There's something, something wrong. wrong. There was something. For real. Yeah. And There's then you no also got to factor. Okay, th- we already knew the dude was depressed. Yeah. He just lost his brother. Yeah. Like, to him, that was probably, like, his brother. And yeah. not to mention, he had clinical depression. He's yeah. talked about the clinical depression. Yeah. You know, there are instances where the medication that you're on is not jiving right with something. And you have to go through a period of switching up your medication and figuring out what's what what's wrong i don't know the situation exactly with right here but i understand there's a lot of people that have you know fucking weeks you know of their unbalanced you know what i mean and they can't get that for whatever reason because you know it's only recent that we've come up with medication that's able to fucking balance that shit out in the first place you know what i mean but i mean we don't understand you can't possibly understand the way somebody else's mind works no you know, it's all experience. That's all we fucking are in the first place. You know what I mean? Um, I believe it was uh, Brian Welch that said something that was really shitty. You know? Yeah, this is my thing. I went back and I read that. Yeah. I, it wasn't shitty. Well, I think that it was, my, but my, my he was is, grieving. It, it, even then, it wasn't shitty. Like, okay. if you... When I read it, I was like, okay, right. I get where I you're get, coming yeah. from. I it, could, too. It wasn't shitty, but the, the world right now is so damn sensitive yeah. that they saw it, and they're like, oh, you're a dick. No, dude, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's putting out what he feels. Who cares what right. you think about what he just right. said? Right, exactly. That's the way they push it, like on metal injection and shit like that. That's you know how what they I mean? push like, it on try everything. To, every sort of news everything. thing. Like, but, I mean, like that's what I'm saying, though. I mean, to give them... To to even if he did say something shitty, which I don't remember exactly what it was, yeah. I just remember it was some something that people saw as shitty yeah. that I could have understood, but at the same time I absolutely understand if whatever they come back. Understood people because people don't understand people anymore. Yeah, they would have read it and saw he was pissed off, not pissed off. He at, was at what? Right. He was pissed off in yeah. general. He was sad and pissed yeah. off. That's yeah. a difference. Right. Not just 
fuck you for doing that. Right. It was more of a, what the fuck did you just do? You know? Yeah. Why did this just happen? Yeah. It makes you pissed off. Yeah. You know what I mean? It, it absolutely makes sense. Yeah. People react different ways. Yeah. Don't be a bitch about it. Yeah. Period. Exactly. That's true. You know, uh, aside from all of this ugliness that, (laughs) that, the way that people reacted to it and then the, 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 the sadness that it brought, obviously, you know, people but bursting into tears yeah. over it, you know, like you, you got you just got to take away that we had one of the greatest singers, mm-hmm. probably. I mean, sure. whenever, whenever people were starting to yeah. say people were starting to say the word icon and they were, yeah. part, you know, one of the greatest singers. And I remember the first time I heard the word icon with Chester, I was like, are we at that point? And then I was just, you know, I know you, you can give me the eyebrow you want, but like, but that's sort of like, I I saw him as just, I mean, I, I think icon, I think of David Bowie, I think of Freddie Mercury, yeah. I think of like, because you look at the past. I know, I know, but I'm yeah. saying I, I I I wasn't prepared to put him in the past because uh-huh. he was still with us for yeah. so long, he was still active, and then bam, he's gone. You know what really got me when I looked on Wikipedia and I saw him as a past member? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah that fucking got me. I, I wasn't expecting that to get me. Yeah. I was like, you're looking through the members, and there he is, and past members. I'm like, holy fuck, it, it's legit. There, there was also some shit about like somebody uh, hacking into his wife's Twitter and putting a whole bunch of really ugly shit. Uh, on there. There's so many different rumors. Like, there's the whole conspiracy that uh, there's. That Chris Cornell didn't kill himself; he was yeah, murdered. Right. There's, there's there's one where Chester Bennington is actually John Podesta's son. Yeah. yeah. There, like, there's, there's a, a lot of really a stupid of shit out, out there. there. I mean, if anything, there could be a tie where they they were involved in some shit and they took out Chris and then they took out you know. But you never yeah. know. Yeah. You never know. Yeah. Certainly. Or it was just straight up he couldn't take it anymore. That was it. Yeah. yeah. Period. Yeah. Leave it alone. Maybe he's <laughs> on Tupac Island. Could be him, Tupac, and Elvis are just hanging out right now. <laughs> I Bar- like to barbecuing. So. Yeah, that that would be a good life. Um, I I know we have a way that we want to we want to finish this off, but I just want to say like, from from a musician's perspective, mm-hmm. you take you take somebody like Chester, and you just think he did everything that you didn't think could be done with his vocals. He he pushed it, you know, with his screams, his lyrics, his melodies, everything about it. He, he pushed the boundary and he was, we've been saying so long, one step ahead, you know, like they were just doing so much. He left, uh, uh, he left a print in the music world and just in the world in general with, with what he was able to do with his time. And I don't think it's stuff to be taken for granted, but it's still stuff that we can look at and just realize like, there was somebody that fucking good yeah. in this world. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, there's been greats, but there is fucking Chester Bennington who was that damn good. Yeah. Who, you really can't, I mean, I can't think of anybody else like him. Yeah. No. I mean, you there, there's there's goods, there's greats, but he, I, he kind of he set this bar where it's like, you're not anywhere fucking close to Chester Bennington. I didn't realize it until Chester died. Well, that sucks. It no, I mean I knew he was great. Yeah. You know, if anybody would have asked me off the street, but once he did, like I all of a sudden you realize. it hit me like, whoa, we actually lost somebody who was way fucking talented. Yeah. You know, and, and was a part more so uh, an element of something that was really a, a foot ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the them as a band, like exactly. we talk about how like exactly. you you yeah. were you weren't ready to put them as an icon, like I was before this happened was already thinking like they 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 can't do much more before they get put in the like music hall of fame True. or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean b- besides, think about this. What have you seen online of any like s- you know story of something they did wrong or yeah. or something that you know some kind of crazy controversy that they created? There's nothing. Yeah. Yeah, how many charities do they do? So fucking many. It's ridiculous. So many. Yeah, yeah. I how bet they beat money? you too. They, they, like they have a they, they have a thing going. I want to say that it was in Haiti where like th- they yeah. pay people to go get things recyclables and they create clothes and backpacks out of them. Fucking cool. Like they do they do so much and you don't hear anything bad about them. These guys are on another level. They mm-hmm. have always been on another level, and I. I would. I hope they can stay on that level with 
with everything that happened. Yeah. We'll fucking see. Yeah. yeah. But uh, I guess if you're ready to uh, close up shop, yeah, should we finish tell it off? Him? Huh? Should we tell him? Go ahead. All right. So um, in honor of Chester, um, I completely recorded a cover from, you know, the guitar, the synth, and the uh, vocals, and all the other extras, and uh, I did uh, I did the song that hit me the hardest, and uh, without any of uh, what I usually do to any song I ever do, I've kind of got a specific style. I really, um, I left it all out, and I left it completely um, vulnerable, so... Um, uh, we're we're gonna end, end the uh, episode on that note, and uh, here we go. <laughs> were the signs I ignore Can I help you not to hurt anymore We saw brilliance with no One more light goes out in the sky of a million stars. It flickers, flickers. Who cares when someone's time runs out? If a moment is all we are, we're quicker, quicker. Who cares if one more light goes out? Well, I do. The reminders pull the floor from your feet. In the kitchen, one more chair than you need. Oh, and you're angry, and you should be. It's not fair. Just cause you can't see it Doesn't mean it isn't there If they say Who cares if one more light goes out In the sky of a million stars It flickers, flickers Who cares when someone's time runs out If a moment is all we we're quicker, quicker. Who cares if one more light goes out? Well, I do. If one more light goes out in the sky of a million stars, it flickers, flickers. Who cares when someone's time runs out? If a moment is all we are, we're quicker, quicker. Who cares if one more light goes out? Well, I.
do.